It's the Bob and Tom Show. Oh, sure. You've got cable TV. You've seen all those news channels and sports channels, the weather channel, the cooking channel, but now the Bob and Tom Cable Television Group, a division of Frigamall Industries, is proud to present the Time Channel, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You're watching the Time Channel, and uh, looks like we've got a caller. Uh, hello, you're on the air. Uh, hi, uh, yeah, uh, this is Jimmy. Uh, what time is it? It's 1121. Thanks. Love the show. <laughs> sure thing. Uh, let's go to line two, uh, see what's on your mind. Hello, Time Channel. Uh, hi, uh, I'm sorry. The, the last guy kind of stole my thunder. Uh, you already answered my question. <laughs> oh, uh, you, you mean about the time? Yeah, I was going to ask uh, what time it was. Uh, you said 1121, right? Well, actually, caller, uh, we've got an update on that. Uh, it's now 1122. <laughs> Hey, thanks. Great. I love the show. <laughs> thanks for the call. Uh, looks like we've got just time to take one or two more calls here. Uh, go ahead, caller. Yeah, hey, I, I've been watching the show since 11.04, and, and maybe you guys covered this earlier, but what day is it today? Uh, I'm sorry, caller. You're looking for the day channel. Uh, this is the time channel. Uh, check your uh, local cable listings for that. Day. Oh, sorry. My bad. Could I possibly get somebody to scream these calls? <laughs> and uh, listen, a quick reminder for you viewers. Uh, I'm going to be on vacation next week, so uh, be sure to tune in. Uh, same time, same station uh, for the best of time. <laughs> going to be reliving some of the best moments. But... It's the Time Channel. You won't want to miss Military Monday, where all times, all day long, are given in military time, starting at 0100 hours. A tribute to our fighting men and women. It's the Time Channel. Oh, we got nothing but time. In no time at all, we know you'll be having the time of your life on the Time Channel. <laughs> it's now 11.25. <laughs> From Bob and Tom Cable Television, a division of Frigga Mall Industries. Hey, I've got to go. I'm out of time. <laughs> Your time may vary. Check local listings. <laughs> it's now 11.27. Who the hell knows what time it is? Thank goodness for our smartphones. It told me. Do all the classic rock stations play that great Chicago song? Does, Does anybody, anybody really know what time it is? It's a great tune. What did we do before smartphones? I my, my smartphone also uh, has me being more considerate. It reminds me of birthdays. It, right? Yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't have the... That doesn't really count. What do you mean it doesn't count? If you get like an auto-reply happy birthday from your phone, does it really make you See, happy? You remind me of someone that I might, may or may not have been in a legal entanglement with. And if <laughs> the gif wasn't on the counter... When they got no, up. No, 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 that's... Uh, I, that, I hadn't thought enough about it. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I lived through that, mister. No, I'm just saying. I, I, yes, when PTSD. When you're... Uh, I understand. It's just a machine telling you that. Yes. As opposed to a, a thoughtful gift. A really smart machine, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. They're, they're absolutely amazing. Can't help but say, uh, you really got some sun over there. Yeah, weekend. I was uh, skiing in Colorado, and uh -huh. I got really badly burnt. Oh I told him, I thought, he looks... <laughs> wow. Doesn't he look uh, ruddy? Yeah, I think he well, looks I had, uh, you look like you work at an oil rig or something. <laughs> the first day I wore uh, goggles, which I don't usually wear. I usually wear sunglasses, uh -huh. so I have that monkey look <laughs> from. Uh, That's fine. Getting you look. Uh, I know you were. Uh, you're very conscious of the sun, and you have to be. You're very yeah. fair, very very white. I, I, I wore sunscreen <laughs> the second couple of days. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the right side got a little more than the left. That's interesting. Really? I didn't. Uh, doesn't make sense. I didn't notice that. Yeah, maybe a little, yeah. Uh, really? Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. How odd. I don't remember. <laughs> I do know. I, I finally figured out why uh, Jesus uh, uh, emerged from the Middle East rather than uh, the Colorado ski country. Oh, oh yeah? What? Yeah, because he would have said to God, hey, look, um, I'm going to do a few more runs. Can we put off this? <laughs> Can we put off the crucifixion for another couple of years? This is a blast. You said you uh, skied more than you had all year. This weekend. Yes. Last weekend. Because I didn't have my little girls with me. Well done. So I was able to actually go. Yeah, that, that does 
It was just, you. just fantastic. Just the beautiful, beautiful. Oh, good. Women. I'm glad you deserve Had it. A great time. Um, I understand uh, there was some, uh, some. I missed something. Speaking of uh, sun and cold. What'd you miss? Uh, I missed a news story about uh, 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 frostbite. Uh, would oh, you care yeah. to uh, pass Chicks that along? Got that. I don't know. We uh, our big question on Friday was why isn't this a bigger story? But yes, from the New York Times, several fans of the Kansas City Chiefs who attended that playoff game against the Dolphins. Back in uh, January, suffered frostbite that required amputations, according to the hospital that treated them. Uh, By latest count, because they did have some people who were, it was four degrees below zero air temperature, 27 degrees below uh, with the wind chill at Arrowhead. Uh, But other people had to undergo amputations because of, uh, uh, they were just working outside. But uh, the Arrowhead Stadium people involved fingers and toes. It treated dozens of the uh, hospital research medical center in Kansas City. Said um, patients experienced frostbite during an 11-day cold snap. Not all the patients who had amputations went to the Chiefs game. Uh, the exact number uh, needs to be is it's unclear, but they said but they can't around, count because they're a finger around twelve. <laughs> that's that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. But I I I don't know how this isn't a bigger story. But apparently, you, you know, know my you know my take it, on this. It's what What's you do. Take? Oh, uh, Josh had your uh, your angle yeah, on the, it. The, the, the billionaires that own these places, these teams, and they're all mega billionaires should put up. They, they, there should be indoor. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. That or they should play the games elsewhere. It's not fair. Uh, I think uh, Pat has a song about this situation. I lost a finger <laughs> when the Chiefs played San Francisco. Uh, they played the Dolphins. Never probably. let the facts get in the way of a good tune. <laughs> I lost a finger. Right you are, Pat. When the Chiefs played San Francisco, <laughs> I got gangrene below the knee. <laughs> I lost a foot. Where did my fist go? <laughs> I love my team, the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the, the coldest I've ever been in my life was in Arrowhead Stadium. Yeah, I don't know what it is about there. It, but. I was there. It was freezing. Not I, would not, I was not at that game. But uh, Pat, that reminds me of something. I don't know if any of you guys have spotted this. Um, and you, you're going to have to go into the archives. Uh, Pat has a really good song. Not right now, but I'll give you some time here. Uh, Pat has a really good song about Cola Guard. Oh, yes. Has anybody noticed the commercial? No. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Now, do you want to explain what Cola Guard is, Chris? Because I know you used it. I did use it once. Um, Cola Guard is a home uh, test that you take so that you don't have to sometimes get a colonoscopy where you put this little net type thing over your toilet. They send you all the goods <laughs> and then uh, you send a little fecal sample in a little jar, mm-hmm. wrap it up. Yeah, it's called, it, 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 the, the home, it's called poop in a basket. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, yeah, you, it, uh, as, as I understand it, it, it comes with like, those things you used to take goldfish when they die out of the aquarium. Little- and you uh, you <clears throat> stand well, actually, up and it has cover a, it, and, yeah you cover your toilet and has like a catcher it's that, like a, yeah. it's like a net underneath right. uh, yeah. but it's yeah. and it's actually a really good thing yes. it's, 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 it's it is a, a very it's good a, thing it's a it's a very important test i i i am um, i certainly advise you to take it if you're of age but no one's noticed the commercial Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. they've taken the song my way and they have people singing it um with regard to Colagard. really yes um, uh, okay. Certainly a classic. That's amazing. I, I think my way isn't that uh, Paul Anka based on some French, French song? song yeah. Yes. Yeah, so he did uh. the lyrics. So I'm not sure who owned the uh, who owned the rights, but someone has signed it over. Uh, you think it's? It can't be. Uh, Sinatra's not singing it. They have bar- various people are you know, public they, domain. They, they, no. They, no. They, they had. I, they. I'm sure they've paid. Paul Link is, and whoever else was involved, but uh, yeah. it just seemed a little bit odd. I can't quite see Sinatra hovering <laughs> over a toilet. I pooped into the net. It was a turd. 
I sent it FedEx. I don't know. I that's not how the words go, but I. It's, but hey, <laughs> hey, I get it. If it's, I understand too, Christy, the the higher you drop into the net, the more accurate the test. Isn't that correct? I don't know that. Yes, they they urge you to hang high. Yeah, yeah, hang high. I had not heard that. <laughs> hang that high, baby. Yeah. I only did it once. I believe they did the traditional they, route last time. They prefer a certain consistency. I understand. Uh, I had there a are a lot of rules. It comes with a lot of direction. I had a prostate recently and... Uh, exam. Exam. Yeah. You still have a prostate as far as I know. Um, it doesn't get any easier, I'll tell you. But you really have... You should get it. Yeah. Get it done. Yeah. But man. Whew. Yes, watch out for that Cola Guard commercial. Okay. Um, we'll do. What else is going on over there? Uh, we've got uh, the NFL free agency plan is... Kicking into high gear. We already know uh, where Russell Wilson will be headed, where Baker Mayfield's going to be quarterbacking. The San Francisco 49ers made a surprising mood, a move. And uh, let's see. Caitlin Clark keeps rolling right along. She wins yesterday in overtime. And uh, we had one of those. Uh, somebody made a 94-foot length of the basketball court putt and won a car. Two of them. Not just any. It's a free car. Whoa. Mm. One Twice. Guy, one guy won 5K and one guy won a car. What? Yep, in the last My week. My goodness. Yeah, those are those are always exciting. I think. And the hole is uh, just a bitty bit bigger than the ball that yeah. they're shooting into. It's really huh. tough. Tough to do. Yeah, they should do the opposite thing at golf tournaments. What, have somebody shoot a basketball? Yeah. <laughs> shoot a basketball if you get it into the hole. <laughs> you mean like pick the shortest hole, obviously, and you have to throw it if from 130 yards? Or yeah. <laughs> Maybe this, this idea needs a little polish. Put a basket okay. up okay. down there at the end. All uh, right. Okay. Uh, but you're going to be uh, watching some TV uh, with all the great basketball, college basketball coming up. You'll be home yeah. comfortable and safe because? March Madness. That's right, because uh, my compound is safe and secure. Uh, peace of mind is what I have with Simply Safe. Experts and customers love Simply Safe for comprehensive protection. Just named Best Home Security System of 2024 by U.S. News World Report and Best Customer Service in Home Security by Newsweek. Advanced technology from Simply Safe protects every room, window, and door. High-def cameras inside and out, backed by 24-7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day. And there's no long-term contract ever. You get the emergency response you need at half the cost of traditional home security. And yes, this is the system that you can install yourself or you can have the professionals at Simply Safe do it for you. And Simply Safe has a 60-day risk-free trial. I've never heard tell of this but if you don't love your system you return it for a full refund protect your home today and get peace of mind bob and tom show listeners get a special 20 percent off any new simply safe system when you sign up for fast protect monitoring all you have to do is visit simplysafetom.com that's simplysafetom.com there's no safe like simply safe uh coming up prayer in schools oh no no just a praying mantis we'll find out about that and um fart spray Fart spray! Evacuates the school. All right. Uh, they weren't exactly sure what it was. Uh, everyone's okay. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, this is comedian Sean Maury, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or anytime excuse me or um are you serious with it i mean why are you doing this me uh, the real me is right here i could easily be doing this we we don't need you man i uh, look there's only room for one of us 
That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. A truck driver distracted and by a Andrew GPS Johnson to, uh, unit crashed near the intersection of US 278 at Arkansas Highway 24 early Monday, spilling a truckload of spaghetti sauce. Camden Police Sergeant Corey Saunders <laughs> said the spaghetti sauce truck was headed to Dallas about 3 a.m. when the driver became distracted, overcorrected, and rolled over after crossing the center line of the highway. The driver suffered minor injuries, but there was sauce all over the road. Oh, oh dear God, 2,000 quarts of blood. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst accident I've ever seen. <laughs> Stand back. There's blood everywhere. Oh, wait a minute. Mm. Do we have a garlic bread truck? Yeah, exactly. They just mopped it up with a bunch of garlic oh, bread. Oh, isn't that the best? Uh, mm. Yes, it is. God, I'd rather have that than the spaghetti noodles. Just the sauce and the bread. What's wrong with you? How dare you put pasta down? I can't eat a whole can't, can't bar. <laughs> <laughs> I can't eat spaghetti noodles. They I go can. Right to my hip. But I like the bread part. Better than the pasta? Yes. No, no. The bread's lovely and the pasta's great too. Here, here's what Tom's doing telling you what you like. Of course he okay. is. I'm you know you that. like the pasta. Here's one of the fattest things I've ever done. I, uh, <laughs> oh, can we, we have an we intro for this feature? We need something like boop, 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 Or just play a uh, blank boop, baby elephant boop, walk. Boop, 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 And now John Charles shares one of the fattest things he's ever done. And broken toilet seat doesn't count. Now this is fatter than telling the guys on the phone when you order Chinese takeout that you need Four sets of silverware when it's just no, you. no. It was it was <laughs> faking that there was somebody else with. What's that, honey? <laughs> <laughs> Two orders of crab uh, rangoon. Uh, okay, if you say so. <laughs> Frigamall Records, the same people that brought you the all-bass Christmas album, Amazing Bass, are proud to present Jimmy Pardo's first solo project, Nothing But Air Bass. Hi, I'm Jimmy Pardo. You know, there's nothing cooler in rock and roll than the bass. And these songs are so cool, I don't even need a bass. <laughs> so just pick up your air telephone and dial. Jimmy Pardo's Nothing But Air Bass. Get yours today. So, Mark, you're a single guy. Yeah, I tell you, though, it's tough because uh, <laughs> I got these neighbors behind uh -huh. me. Really? My neighbor, Gail, very... Um, Gail? Uh, Gail is a woman who just moved in. Her bedroom wall is right behind mine, and um, she has a new boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And I found this out. Uh, his name is... <laughs> <laughs> so, Nick, let's start with the basics. Are you a uh, married guy? No, I got just uh, got divorced. Sorry to hear about that. It's okay. Lots of people get divorced. Um, Einstein got divorced. He did? Hey. Yeah, did you know that? Albert Einstein, arguably the most intelligent man who ever lived, got divorced. They should tell you that before you get married. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't be, do you love her? Do you want to spend the rest of your life with her? It should be, do you think you're smarter than Einstein? Also, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're dating then? Uh, I guess. You know what I don't want to do? I don't want to say I love you anymore. I hate that first <laughs> I love you. That's the worst. The first time you ever tell a woman you love her. If they like you, they want to hear it. And when they hear it that first time, something comes over them. You know, their eyes get all wide and get that diabolical grin on their face. You can almost feel them saying, Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Essential morning radio. All day and all night. This is Bob and Tom Radio. 
Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hi. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. You're good, welcome. Good to be back. Um, back in the swing of things. Got a lot going on this week. And uh, interesting, interesting things in the news. Uh, Josh, you'll be very interested in a story coming up about um, finding a 100-year-old movie. Oh. That has been lost all these years. Speaking of movies, big night, of course, the Oscars. Watched every minute of it. Did you really? I did. Wow. wow. First time oh, in years. I that was last night, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was last night. Boy, that Al Pacino. Yeah, he it made that. He, he went viral, yeah. Yeah, he walked out to present the best picture, right? And literally walked out and said, oh, I guess I have the envelope, and they just... Opened it up and said Oppenheimer. I mean, it was just it was the most bizarre. Thought. Yeah, he said a name first, like yeah, uh, was... Daphne uh, yeah, Oppenheimer. He didn't, <laughs> he, was... he didn't announce who the you know the ten nominees. He, he just it was the weirdest yeah, it was weird. thing ever. Huh. Yeah. Wow. So Oppenheimer won. Oppenheimer yeah. won. Okay. Yeah, best but picture. Doesn't he have like a, a six month old or something? Yeah, maybe it was yeah. tired. Yeah, I yeah. think he has a little baby. I know, yeah. I, I know what that's like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little baby uh, little baby, uh, baby girl. It, uh, it was something. So Oppenheimer won a bunch of the awards. They right? won Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, and then Emma Stone won Best Actress. I think that was really the only... Surprise. Surprise, kind yeah. Kind of a surprise. The woman and from... And Divine uh, Joy, Ro- yeah, she yeah. won holdovers, for yeah. Heart Holdovers, holdovers yeah. 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 And Paul Giamatti walked her up on the stage. It was very sweet. Did Holdovers win Best Screenplay? No. Uh, oh, that's a good question. No. no. Oh, American Fiction? Because that'll be yep. interesting. If, American Fiction. Okay. Thing. Yeah. Okay, well, we can review them later on. Um, Holdovers is uh, under... The screenplay is... Uh, there's uh, plagiar- claims that plagiarism, it's been yeah. totally plagiarized. Yeah. Ooh, really? Yes. Yeah. Uh-oh. Like... The, the the claims are like that word for word brazenly plagiarized. <laughs> it, uh, it really got traction right before yeah the Oscars. So we'll have to see if that pans out. It's really good. So whoever if it was stolen, <laughs> well done yeah. to all involved. Yeah, you got, <laughs> well, you, 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 yeah. Give nicely done. Yeah, yeah. We're <laughs> gonna steal a movie. Yeah, good. I think <laughs> Willie Sutton said that. Didn't he? If you're gonna steal something, steal something nice. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. It says uh, dear Bob, a time show. Uh, the mailbag. That's us. Uh, we just saw Greg Warren. Oh, nice. I'm Sold sorry. out show at the Grove in Lowell, Arkansas. I've heard about it in your show last week. He killed it. Oh, really? Please send Josh, <laughs> Jeff, and Willie G down here, please. Okay. Well, I'll sort of look forward to that. We are sending a bunch of people a bunch of places in the near future. Yes, Charleston, West Virginia, big one. Yeah, Coming up that. on April 5th. We'll tell you about all that, but uh, right now we turn to the sports page. Some people call West Virginia almost heaven. I'd be among that number. Yeah. I lived there for quite a while. Used to eat at uh, Billy Boy's, a pizza place down there in Welch, West Virginia. Oh, you know, it's interesting, Tom. I'm uh, waiting for that part. <laughs> <laughs> From the sports desk. A person familiar with the details, uh, Russell Wilson has agreed to sign a one year deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, or nice as, of Denver to pay him. <laughs> as I've always called them, the. Pittsburgh feelers. Man, oh man. I tell you what. Oh boy. That is you, some funny stuff. You're what? Did G, seventh grade that came across? Oh, you? May, maybe fifth grade. You think so? I don't know who wrote the uh, genius I yelled. Genius. <laughs> why why would he play at all? Right. Uh he's getting thirty nine million from the Denver Broncos, regardless of where he plays. Or if he plays, right? So uh this asks the question, does Pittsburgh and Denver play this upcoming season? I'm not sure of that. Yeah, they, they certainly do. might. But uh so he's getting like a million, 1.2 from Pittsburgh, and then he's getting 39 million from Denver. So it's possible if Pittsburgh plays Denver, the Broncos will be paying the highest paid player on the Steelers to, to quarterback against them. Isn't that odd the way things work? Why take uh, the risk? It's a teeny tiny world. I don't know. Just, I don't know, Tom. Just collect the checks. He just he wants to play, man. He's a competitor. Who said that? Football players play football? Belichick, didn't he say that? I have no idea. Man, you got to watch this uh, dynasty on Apple Plus. Boy, oh boy. It's like a 10 hour uh, uh, documentary, the uh, Patriots and their success. And, and um, evidently, Robert Kraft, one of the things that came out this past week was he, uh, during uh, one of the Super Bowl wins, he decided to go to Russia to meet Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Him what? And, him and Rupert Murdoch went to Russia, right? But um, uh, 
uh, Kraft offered Vladimir Putin, he said, look at this Super Bowl ring. Joe Theismann has done this to me many times. He, he lets me hold a Super Bowl ring, sure. stuff like that. Well, Putin thought Kraft oh, was oh, giving him the ring. I remember this. And, yeah. and he oh. put it in his pocket, and he, Kraft said, KGB immediately surrounded him, and I didn't see him the rest of the visit. So, so, oh, he, so he kept his ring. Putin still has... The ring, evidently. I, I remember that story. Sure. Probably yeah. explain why Rupert Murdoch was in Russia. He's getting married for the fifth time to a Russian retired scientist. What was the name of that Russian tennis player that uh, was hot there for about 10 minutes? Remember her? Navratilova? No, that's no, not no, 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 no. No, no, no. Billy Jean. Kornikova? Korn yeah. Billy Jean Anna Khrushchev. Kornikova? Anna Kornikova. Oh, oh sorry. Yes, Anna Kornikova. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Billy Jean Khrushchev. <laughs> <laughs> we will bury you. Billy Jean dictator. <laughs> Billy. That's pretty funny, Tom. I, I, I remember um, that. I'll have to see if I can find that. Soup. We had that story of the Super Bowl ring a long time ago. Rupert Murdoch said, I think it was after uh, 39 or 40 or whatever it was, back in the early aughts. And Murdoch told Kraft, go ahead, ask him for a back. You, you weren't giving that to him. <laughs> uh-huh. Heck, he probably didn't even miss it after a few minutes. Oh, yeah, he's, he's got right. He has plenty Five of them. Can't more. they just print you a new one? Six yeah. more. Oh, well, no, that's why they're special, Tom. <laughs> they're Super Bowl rings. Well, okay. Let's make him up another one. Are they numbered? What do you mean, like... Oh, stamped inside, like... Yeah, I, I would imagine there's some one. way to keep track of them. What is? What, how does that help if they are numbered? Who gets the first one? The general manager, we're, the coach, We're very Tom sure Brady? he has number 72 or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to any of these questions. I'm trying to find out if I can find the original story. San Francisco 49ers are planning to cut their longest tenured player by releasing defensive tackle Eric Armstead. Now, he's spelling Eric... A R I K. That's not right. That's not right at all. This is a salary cap move. They could not. Uh, Wasn't Goldfinger A U R I K or A U R I C? Wasn't it like Auric Goldfinger? So they could get the A U joke. Get the A U. Yeah, I, I joke, Josh. I think it's a bit of a stretch. But. <laughs> I know the atomic weight for gold is seventy nine. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, all I know is that K is potassium, A U is gold, and then I'm out. Really? Isn't lead a weird one also? Oh, like T-E or I, something. I don't they know. They sometimes show up in crossword puzzles. I have to look them up. And uh, also this other person, uh, we got this report. Uh, quarterback Baker Mayfield is staying with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He agreed to a three-year contract. Hold on to yourself, Christy. Okay. $115 million, and that includes $50 million guaranteed. Man. For the Baker Mayfield. Caitlin Clark overcame a cold start. He's, she scored 30 of 34 after halftime. Third ranked Iowa rallied past Nebraska in overtime to win their third straight Big Ten tournament. Hannah Stulke finished with 25 and nine rebounds for the Hawkeyes. They trailed by 13 in the first half, but they come back and win. And South Carolina uh, forward Camilla Cardoso was one of six players ejected. From the SEC Tournament Championship game, she shoved LSU's Flo J. Johnson to the floor late in the fourth quarter. Gamecocks guard Malaysia. Malaysia. Full Wiley had stolen the ball from Johnson, and then all heck broke loose. South Carolina remains undefeated and did win the SEC for that game and the tournament title. I did, I did find this about the Super Bowl ring. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh, Robert Kraft reportedly flashed his Super Bowl ring at police officers who stopped him after he allegedly paid for sex at a Florida spa. Oh, that's totally different. <laughs> <laughs> he reportedly asked the police, hey, are you a Dolphins fan? So he wears his Super Bowl he ring. He then told the officer he was owner of the Patriots and showed his Super Bowl ring. Really? Uh, yeah. hmm. oh. That was, of course, in Florida, so... You don't flash your Super Bowl ring in Dolphin country. No, and you just don't... I thought people didn't wear them. Hmm. That's why uh, safety deposit boxes were invented, yeah. right? You keep it in the safety He's deposit He's got plenty of them. He could afford to lose the one. That's true. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in golf, Tom, you want to hear about golf? Scotty yeah. Scheffler? Go ahead. He's the best. Uh, he was uh, hot with the putter at Bay Hill yesterday. He wins the event in Orlando. 
Uh, Christopher Bell and Joe Gibbs Racing won the NASCAR event in Avondale, Arizona. Penske and Joseph Newgarden won the IndyCar season opener in St. Pete. And Lindsey Horan scored on a header in first half stoppage time in the United States, beat Brazil 1-0 yesterday to win. Conk calf, conk conk calf, conk calf, conk conk calf. It's a conk calf women's gold cup. That's right. What's it called? It's C O N C A C A F. Conk calf. Okay. Never heard. I've, of it. I've done this a million times. <laughs> we're on the uh, we're on the never heard of it page. Uh huh. Yeah. You've heard of it, Christy? Yeah, he's done this before. Yeah. <laughs> the Conca Calf. Translates into a Sammy Davis Jr. Sammy yes. Davis Jr. <laughs> it's women's soccer. Okay. Easy. Now, I got oh, a. Boy. I got a. Uh, I got the Cola Guard thing for you guys to hear. But, uh, again, I was surprised that this classic song has been turned into a commercial, but... Uh, I have he, not seen it yet. Here's a taste of it. The thought of getting screened for colon cancer made me queasy. But now i found a way that's right for me. Feels more easy. My doc and I agreed. I take the time. Today's a good day. I screened with Cola Guard and did it my way. And now, that's, oh. of course, a song made famous by Frank Sinatra. Of course. And I'd, obviously, somewhere along the way, the Cola Guard people purchased the rights to it. And again, I, uh, Cola Guard, very important. Uh, read about it. It's a good thing to do. Uh, and it does involve, Chris, you said uh, netting your toilet and catching a... Somebody called it a butt hat kind of thing. But yeah, And you, uh, you then you, you ship the fecal material mm. to the Cola yeah, Guard people. through UPS. They're very nice. You take it yeah. to the UPS store and oh, hand no, it I, to the guy. <laughs> I, I didn't play the whole thing but the, because then they kind of Sinatra it up. They do? Yeah, yeah. And he goes, duty, duty, do. <laughs> oh, you send us that. your duty. <laughs> duty, duty. Tom. <laughs> Surprising they would do that. Tom. I mean. Making that up. <laughs> do they really do that? <laughs> yeah, they had to have thought of that, though. <laughs> Can you, you know, the guys producing this had to have gone, hey, you know what we could do? We could get cut to the truck or have him going, duty, duty, do. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't, don't make it funny. Now, Pat, you... Uh, you have your cola cartoon. How did you happen to see this on the TV? It just... It's on the news. I, the only thing I've watched in the last m two months is uh, the news. The evening oh. news. It's on the evening news every night. I would track. I mean, they they well, like their you know, every commercial. Every yeah. commercial on the evening news is a drug. Oh yeah. True enough. Andy and I were going to count them yesterday during not only just like CBS Sunday morning and yeah, they right? shows. And... Yeah, they because apparently their audience is really sick. <laughs> you and your uh, <laughs> you and your new husband are counting uh, commercials, huh? Yeah, the, the sheen is off the roads, I guess. Wow. Yeah. Boy, well, oh boy, sounds. They were even during the Academy Awards. It was oh cool. my god! Hey, honey, come on in. Oh it's a it's a spot for psoriasis. I love this one. <laughs> it's sad. But the color guard is really an important. Thing. So I mean, it's, 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 nothing it's, uh, is everything. I've seen that one. Nothing uh, is everything. Yeah, that's, that's what that commercial's for. I hear yeah, that all the yeah. time. Nothing is Sometimes everything. Sometimes I can't figure out what the disease is. Yeah, a lot of times you It's because it's usually other people have they're doing their canoeing and their mountain biking and their skiing. And uh -huh. you know, do you have <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. What is it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and how often do you go to your doctor and say, I want such and such a drug? That's very that's why they advertise. But I the didn't know the doctor's they, supposed to know. I didn't know you could do that, but you can. I didn't either. Yeah. I love when they do the Disclaimer that if you're allergic to blank, don't. Yeah, don't yeah. Well, how no do you kidding. Know? How do you know? How do you know you By the way, if you're allergic, you may die. I just we don't need the disclaimers. If these are prescriptions, you should say, ask a doctor. I don't, I don't need to hear three minutes of blah 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 blah, and then right. tests. One person in four million died. They probably were. <laughs> I've took been themselves told, out. I've been told I should treat my uh, doctor like a waiter at a restaurant. You tell him what you want. Really? And they'll come right back. Oh, oh, really? That's what they, <laughs> Good luck with that. That's what I've been told. Online somewhere, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, HeyDoc.com, I think. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Doc. Uh, uh, Pat, uh, do, you, do you have your tribute to? Bruce Springsteen here. How's everybody doing? Oh, oh hey, hey, boss. Hey, boss. Hey, boss. You know, we all got to take care of ourselves. <laughs> Sometimes one of those things you got to do is send a stool sample to get tested. <laughs> The employees of Cold Guard are the ones who, who do the testing, the songs for them. Well, I get early, punch my time card. I work in the mail room. 
at Cola Guard. The place is full of boxes who oh, don't know where to begin. UPS is here. Another load came in. <laughs> Another load came in. Another load came in. A box shattered and splattered on two good men. Always wear your mask and protect your skin. Here, Cola Guard. Another load came in. Come on, boys. Now open the box and handle with care. Then send the stool to the lab upstairs. Some samples are huge, others are curly and thin. <laughs> Here's FedEx. Another load came in. I wear a hazmat suit and thick rubber gloves. Some men do with the must. Some men do with the love. Now my son says he'll join me. Wants to drop out of school. I said, now hold on, boy. Don't be no fool. You gotta get your hands dirty and work like a mule. Spend your whole life being ridiculed. <laughs> Another load came in. <laughs> Another load came in. Joe passed out, hit his head, notified his next again. It's corn and stew for lunch again. Here, Cola Guard, another load came in. The mailman's here, another load came in. Oh, what's that smell? Oh, another load came in. Let's get to work. Oh, thank you very much. A little tribute to uh, uh, the adult health. And uh, the world of uh, Cola Guard. The boss showed up last night at John Mellencamp's show in New Jersey and came out on stage and did pink houses with them. That was kind of cool. Well, he almost has. I mean, he was right there. Right? Yeah, he lives New in New Jersey, Jersey right? Probably He's just down the block. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Now, the, the Cola Guard thing, Christy, you say when you did it, uh, yes. you, uh, you you put the netting over the toilet. Yes. Do you have a cat? No. Oh. I don't have a cat. A cat? Because I imagine if a cat, a cat saw you doing that, they'd go... Finally, they got it right. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen all those... You take uh, it the net and you, you box it up. <laughs> You've seen those viral videos. They train their cat to go in the toilet. Sure, absolutely. It's amazing. He gets right up there. But, uh, number one, number two, right in the toilet. Like, like, <laughs> That's like great. A person. <laughs> he perched on the rim. Oh, yeah. Nothing can go wrong. No. Well, you don't have to worry about cleaning out the box or anything. That's a great idea. It's a wonderful idea. Yes, you think uh, a golden retriever <laughs> get up there? And... I no is the answer. Uh, that Have is... you noticed that you can tell when your dogs are going to go? I I can always. I've been around them so long. Oh yeah, she's going to go. The Here spin. Go. Oh, the spin. She's go. the, the deep sniff, and then they start, they do the quick circle, and then the yeah. famous crouch. Here we go. Yeah. And Sometimes then the other... they spin in one area and then go to another area and spin. And if you have two they... dogs, oh. the uh, what, whichever one didn't go comes over and sniffs what has gone and almost like gives her a paw <laughs> up. Or what has no, gone. I yeah. don't nice. have that. Very nice. Nicely yeah. done. Yeah. Good smell. <laughs> All right, sir. <laughs> now, uh, what's coming up in sports? Uh, coming up in sports, we've got kangaroos. Ooh. Many, many kangaroos and... Uh, Toys on the Caribbean or Caribbean, whatever you'd like. Okay. Hmm. And uh, this might be your first rodeo coming up in sports. I don't know. Maybe all right. Uh, and uh, someone arrested. Um, names, actual name is D's Nuts. Yeah. We'll find out. Is that right? How D's Nuts are doing. But right now, how's D's feet doing? Well, it all depends. Do you have that flimsy, lame, no-nothing thin liner in your shoe? Probably not very good. Well, if you have orange insoles, well, you're doing way better than those other folks are. If you have back pain, hip pain, knee pain, you know how much it affects your daily routine. It's frustrating, especially when you don't know why it's happening. Well, if you work on your feet all day, you're putting stress on your body. Go to orangeinsoles.com. Find about how they offer arch support in a deep cup to properly support your heel, your feet, and thusly, your entire body. Helping to alleviate that pain. Think of a table. It wobbles without proper support, don't it? It all starts from the ground up, my friends. These are great for work boots, sneakers, dress shoes, high heels, golf shoes. You name it. Find the right fit for you with the insole quiz you can take at orangeinsoles.com. It's very easy. There are no math questions, no geography questions, just 
hey, how can we help your feet and how can we help your body feel better? Head to orangeinsoles.com today. Listen to this. Free shipping plus orange insoles come with a 60-day we want you to be happy guarantee. The best part about them, no cutting required. We've all gotten those other insoles before where you have to... Yeah, it's an art project. Yes, exactly. <laughs> am I making paper dolls or am I trying to feel better? Can I trace this? <laughs> no, do it freehand. Yes. Orange insoles true to size. That's orangeinsoles.com. Feel better, do more. All right. Thank you very much, Orange Insoles. Uh, well, also, uh, uh, coming up, we have uh, a couple of... Uh, uh, folks go to some college basketball games and come away big winners by making a putt across the floor. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Become a Bob and Tom VIP and get your Bob and Tom. Hey, hi, I'm Tom. This is Chick. That's Josh. And this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston. The Bob and Tom Show is coming. That's right. Rock 105 WKLC bringing us to town with a live broadcast with... Special guest Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns Plus Don't Forget. Did you see the word Don't Forget? <laughs> no, but it's all, but it's like it's like it's half a, a sentence. Don't miss an yeah, amazing it's just like comedy don't show. Miss amazing Start over. Word. Hey, Charleston. It's the Bob and Tom Show. That's right. And our friends from Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live broadcast. Speech. <laughs> Speech. Speechery. One more time. Here we go. This for sure. Here we go. All right. Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom show coming to, yes, your area from Rock 105 WKLC. They're bringing us to town for a live show. Special guest. Duke Tomato. <laughs> you nerds. <laughs> Start over. Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guest Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns. Plus, do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right. It all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston, if you come out and see us live on the morning of of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show Comedy Tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold, and all hosted by yourself. <laughs> yourself. <laughs> <laughs> all hosted by Tom and Christy. Aww. Tickets on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Time at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See you there! Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. Can I tell the story again? And I always Which love one? the story about when you and Cheryl were playing and you, the day that you finally, well, the, the day that she quit playing one-on-one -on -one against you. You mean when I finally beat her? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, is, this is Reggie's was, sister, yeah, of course. A couple course. years ago. <laughs> she, uh, she, 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 wasn't gonna, she wasn't gonna play anymore. Well, when I sent her shot into the <laughs> my mom's rose garden, <laughs> we started playing horse. Right. But you gotta remember, Cheryl was always two to three inches taller as we were growing up, so mm -hmm. I started to catch her in height my freshman and sophomore year of high school. Mm -hmm. So up until that point, Cheryl dominated me. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she dominated dunk on everyone, you? though. Uh -huh. I don't feel so bad. Uh -huh. Didn't she score? A, how many did she score that one night? You, you, you scored, what was it? 45. 45. 50. And she came in and... You know, I'm gloating. Because <laughs> uh -huh. you know, we had played in the away gym. She had played at the home gym. So mm -hmm. my dad was with her at the their game, and my mom was with me, so we get in the car, hey, I had my best game ever, uh -huh. 40, 45 points, Strider started, Strider, what did you do tonight? And she looked at my dad, and kind of looked down. <laughs> uh -huh. 
And Dad's like, oh, she had a pretty good game. I was like, oh, yeah, but I bet it wasn't 40 45. Yeah. Uh, no, she had a really good game. <laughs> well, what's really good? Uh huh. She had 105. <laughs> By herself? <laughs> I'm like, they, the team scored 105? No, 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 son. <laughs> Cheryl. Cheryl scored. Oh, 105. 105 points. And five. I bet that record still points. stands. I believe it does. Mm-hmm. They beat that team 179 oh to my 12. God. The point guard, which is still a record, had 39 assists. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like crazy numbers. <laughs> Out. Excuse me, sir. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You look pretty, pretty sweaty. Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, I just jogged five miles. I did the weights. Did some step aerobics. God, I'm dying. What do you need after a big workout like that? I could use a big glass of water. Water? Yeah. You don't want water. You uh-huh. need something to replace your bodily fluids. Get you back on your feet again. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Uh, all right, what do you got? Here, try this. Uh-huh. What is it? Thirspiration Plus. Thirspiration Plus, huh? Replaces all your bodily fluids after a big workout. <laughs> all right, yeah, I'll try <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, what is that? It tastes like sweat. It is sweat. <laughs> wow, well, a little, little coloring. Uh, we got some carbonation, but... What are you trying to do to me? Thirspiration Plus replaces all your bodily fluids lost during a big workout. Manager. Thirspiration <laughs> Plus. <laughs> bodily sweat and icy Come here, you crazy son of a bitch. You're sick. Perspiration Plus. Lemon Lime, Tropical Punch, or Clear. Or Clear. Good night, bro. Your shorts are real later. Bob and Tom 24 7. It's not on air, it's online. Bob and Tom. 24-7. Laura Coretta's a fine young comedian. Uh, are you a health yeah. guy? You run, you look very slender. And uh, I'm not a, a big health guy, although I'm healthy. I just uh, had a complete physical, and uh, unfortunately, I'm at that age where you get the real intense physical. No, yeah. yeah you know, I hope I'm not sharing too much, but Mm-mm. the doctor actually stuck a camera in my rectum. <laughs> oh. It wasn't part of any procedure. He just suspected that his nurse was stealing from him. <laughs> you know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on you realize it's not your girlfriend. It's just a woman on a bus. So that's how you know you're too high. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Comedy, guess, Bob and Tom exclusives. And it's here on the internet. Very scary. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom show. Tom, back in the saddle. Fresh from the slopes. A little Colorado ski time. That's right. Mm-hmm. Did you have a great dinner? Yeah. Anything uh, jumps to mind? Yeah. Uh, Piece of meat, uh, hunk of meat, maybe some elk, caribou no. up there in the mountains? Yeah, let's see. I had some pancakes. Chicken noodle soup one night and uh, let's see, some sushi. <laughs> That's about it. All right. Oh, oh you know. You know how to party, don't you? You know somebody? how to live, don't you? <laughs> no, I was busy. I think you might le- I think you might eat less than Christy. Just had a, you know, went to this a very serious sushi place, though. Oh, very? Ooh. Very serious. How does it get very serious? So I was sitting right there in front of the guy. Yeah, uh, that, the, most a, sushi restaurants. No, no, but I know, but I mean, I'm right there. I, it's like a... a, a, a at, the, guy, uh, at the bar. At the bar. At the bar. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And this guy had the whole suit on and the whole deal. And he's, <laughs> yeah. the, the whole, every sushi restaurant. <laughs> so far, that. it sounds like yeah. every yeah. sushi yeah. restaurant. And he's, I kept, he's, and he's taking these hunks of fish and he's... Yep, Making these yep. razor thin yeah, cuts. Yep. Yeah, that's, yeah. I, I, sushi chefs I kept do. waiting for a, I kept waiting for a chunk of his thumb to come off. <laughs> this guy was great. They're skilled, yeah. And Artists. this guy, th- this guy is uh, he. I don't think he speaks any English. So and did you think you of would the sushi think that, restaurant yeah. that you go to? <laughs> yeah. They cut it up in the back and then bring it out to you. The Usually. chefs are always out front. No, but, but I mean, I'm sitting right there though. 
And, then, and, and this guy comes in and he... And I'm he, sitting right there. This this is a famous place. And then he, this guy bows and says something to you in Japanese. Oh, is it yeah, like, Nobu? Uh, what is it, Nobu? Yeah. yeah. No, it's a different one. Oh. I think it was called Bufu. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of ex -cons. You get the check and you go, boy, I feel like I've been Bufu. Oh, oh, wow. that's, the, that is that's the truth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it was good, yeah. I'm doing some all-protein stuff, so it was great. The skiing was great. That's great. Can't beat good. it. Good. And I got really badly sunburned. I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. I, I just... On the, uh, you look fine. I think you look fine. great with color. Yeah, you I think you, you do. should do that more often. I've got kind of a raccoon thing going. If you know. uh, I don't know about that. Okay. You look fine. Okay. Well, good. Well, thank you. I don't know. I had a great time. You look uh, fine. So speaking of skiing, we have skiing in the sports. Kind of. <laughs> skiing in the sports? Skiing, uh, not just any skiing, uh, uh, Josh. Colorado Towns. Uh, and now, Tom <laughs> Tom Sports. Yes. Just for Tom. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we could hear about some assistant coach in the NFL. And no, that would be too far too uh, boring. Having uh, something to do with or sports. Far too common. I never heard of it. ESPN changing its name to NFL. Colorado Towns celebrated unusual sport called... You go ahead and do this, because I don't know what they want. Well, I, I believe this is a Scandinavian ski Skioring? Phrase. I think it, the J is probably silent. Skioring. Skioring. But it looks like ski-joring. What's ski-joring? It combines skiing with the rodeo. <laughs> the rodeo? Now, ever tried to put a ski on a horse? It's not easy. <laughs> yeah. Ever tried riding oh, no, a the horse ski, the ski skis? The, the ski's racing, and it's the boots that are a bitch. It's just... <laughs> They have, to, they have to ride a horse with skis? No, it's this is goes back more than a hundred years. Competitions involve horses. Why have now this is something none of us has ever heard of. Yeah. Competitions involve horses and sometimes dogs, snowmobiles, or even cars. All right. Well, that sounds like a reputable competition. They tow skiers by rope at speeds that can top 40 miles an hour. So imagine it's sort of like water skiing. Over jumps. Except you're behind a horse. As high as eight feet. Behind a horse, okay. Or a car, it sounds like, or a snowmobile. Yeah, the horse snowmobile. is tougher, though, because if the horse, you know. Stops. I sure, yeah, yeah. You well, gotta, defecates. Yeah, you gotta. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. You gotta. Uh, <laughs> move right, Hans. <laughs> <laughs> Skiers also maneuver around obstacles. Ooh, uh, he forgot his goggles. That's I a bad day. Bet they do. <laughs> <laughs> See, he got poop in his face. That's why that would be. That's why that would be funny. I, I'd like to have one where you could lasso snowboarders, take them down. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any of those uh, this weekend? Did you see any? Of course, yeah. Oh, okay. Usually, thought, as, usually as they're running into skiers. I thought you uh, you went places where they they Worked. didn't allow. Sk we, I didn't go to that place. Oh, well, I'd, I'd love to see that though. I'm, I'm... Skiers also maneuver around obstacles. They try to lance suspended hoops with a baton, <laughs> typically a ski pole that's cut in half. Uh huh. Though competitions have a long history in Colorado towns, uh huh, like uh, I believe it's Leadville. Leadville. Let it is Leadville. It's Leadville. Okay, it is derived very cold there, by the way. from the. <laughs> <laughs> the things you find interesting. <laughs> it is derived from the Norwegian word skioring, meaning skydiving. It has nothing to do with that either. It's a baffling story. <laughs> oh, it really, it really is. What a mess this story is. Skioring, uh, they used to do it behind reindeer, it says. Well, uh, that's, well, that's no, it's impossible. not skydiving. It's There's, the Norwegian word means ski driving. Ski driving. You can see why that it would now be that called that. Now that makes sense. Yeah. That. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Out of nothing else, <laughs> reindeer are—they don't really exist. They're just for Santa. Reindeer. Reindeer exist? No, I don't think so. Yes, you look, look they it up. do. Uh, it made its debut in Stockholm. I'm looking it up. At the Nordic <laughs> Nordic Games in 1901. 1901. Hey, Check's right. They do not exist. Thank oh. you. They don't have that at the Winter Games anymore. <laughs> Skioring? No, they don't. Be kind of cool. I think I'd watch it. Yeah, be fun. Um, Leadville, by the way, uh, altitude ten thousand one hundred fifty-eight feet. <laughs> Population under three thousand, but it's cold there. Mm. Is that right? High up. Looks like well, a nice thank place. You. Thank you, Tom. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. yeah, generally it's cold where people ski. Do you realize no one is interested in this but you? <laughs> you know that. How cool would it be to see some guy skiing behind a horse? Hey, Bob and Tom. Uh, and by the way, why didn't they call it Scodio? <laughs> Wouldn't that be better? Scodio. I like the word Scodio. Scodio is Combination yeah. skiing and rodeo. Yeah. Okay. Dear Bob and Tom, hey, you guys, you just don't get it. It's not like any other sushi restaurant. Tom, all caps, was sitting right there. <laughs> you guys don't get it. Honestly, Thank in, you, in, in Tom's defense, uh, how how when, when you guys go to sushi restaurants, are you always sitting at the bar? I usually only sit at the bar if I'm by myself. The, one, the okay. place I go, there's only four seats at the bar. I never sit there. But I'm just saying, the guy was right there, and this guy was. <laughs> This guy's this guy's now, got the whole, this guy's got the whole samurai suit on the now whole in deal. Our defense. <laughs> That's the way they so are. there are only four seats at the bar, samurai but there suit. are tables, right? And what do you think is a samurai suit? And and when you're sitting at a table at that sushi restaurant, do you not see the chef? Right yeah, but there I'm not I'm not a foot and a half away from this guy with the machete about to cut his thumb off. <laughs> Ace's got a whole, looks like he's, he's about to enter the ring. He's got the, the tie belt and the <laughs> spe special hat on. Yeah, they always have <laughs> some kind of yeah. uniform. Yes. Yeah. It was great. Yes. Could you see his eyes? Could you see his whole face? If you can see his whole face, it's not a, a samurai outfit. Did he give you a sample piece of anything? Oftentimes no. they will. Oh, really? Or they'll yeah. give you a special treat for yeah. sitting Something at the bar. Something they're kind of working yeah. on. Or mm -hmm. they, had a really, they had a really cool little tiny sculpture. <laughs> looked just, <laughs> a little, like, about, like about an inch and a half high. What's this thing for? You know what it's oh for? God. You, you, lay your, you lay your sticks on it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's very disrespectful to put chopsticks on the table. I didn't know this. I didn't. I didn't know any of this stuff. Oh, yeah. Those things are cool. Yeah. 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 I wasn't there very you long. Don't have your, you don't have a favorite sushi shop? Mine is Tanaka-san. I love All him. Right. He's now, now we're on the other okay. side. No, I, 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 I used to have Now one. we're in the pretentious <laughs> minutiae. Oh, you you, 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 you don't bar? have a favorite sushi chef? <laughs> no, no I don't. <laughs> Mine is Tanaka-san. I used to have a guy, I kid you not, his name was Mario. Uh, That's not. He, he was, sit at the bar at the same remember Mario? for lunch? He, 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 I'm serious. He, I believe you. He, he, he wasn't Japanese, but he was an excellent... Uh, sorry. See, cross-cultural. Never mind. Uh, we'll be right back. We have... Uh, a uh, yeah. clips and who's <laughs> and we have we have uh, the uh, we have an uh, interesting thing is if Miss Hooker is here I want to see if I can get her in here for this story uh, we have some bread in the news yeah mm. a bread in history news uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show this is the Bob and Tom Show text us at eight 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 two six two eight six six one more Bob and Tom next. Now, Greg, have you ever been in a band? Uh, I was in a band. I played one song in the high school band. Yeah? What yeah. was that? Uh, 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 it was a spiro gyro tune uh -huh. called Catching the Sun. It's <laughs> a good story right there. Is that the hey, song? everybody, storm into your boss's office right now. Tell him what this company needs is a trampoline. <laughs> 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 oh. Now, have you ever considered incorporating the drums into your act? Maybe you could uh, tell one of your uh, <laughs> stories or jokes and then do a quick rim shot? Yeah, I'll do that sometime. Sure, okay. sure. Uh -huh. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe, you could, maybe we could try it with one of your... Uh, do, you, do you remember your suggestions for uh, excuses for being late to work? Uh, sorry I'm late, boss! I hate it here, so what's the rush? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a that's kind of a long rim shot. The, the rim shot was longer than the joke. I, I think. like my joke so much I don't do a rim shot. I do a whole solo. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Any I'm more? Dating, I'm dating this one girl. She loves Picasso and Mexican food. Talk about artsy fartsy. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. One stick down. <laughs> Find another. Uh, Greg Hahn is uh, is, uh -huh. is getting another another drumstick. We're back. What was, what was the name right. of what was the name of your band that did the Spyro Gyro song? Did you have a name for the band? Uh, oh, well, you're going to like this name. The Cardinal Given Redskins. <laughs> <laughs> high school jazz band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so it was the marching band then. Uh, no, no. Oh, the marching band. I'm glad you brought that up. Did, did you march with the drum? Did you did you carry the big drum when you marched, or did you carry the snare? I was in the tri-toms. 
I had the tri toms uh -huh. uh, with oh. the spinning head. Ooh. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So good. You want a little marching? A little marching? You want sure. the marching vibe? No, sir. Sure. Can I just make a suggestion for your live show? Oh, yeah. Um, what's that? Maybe I think you'd probably be the only guy doing this. Uh, I, it wouldn't be. It might be kind of like a prop thing, but you come out <laughs> uh, halfway through your show with those marching drums and. Or uh, maybe come onto the stage with the marching yeah. drums. <laughs> You'd be After you're introduced, guy. march on up there. With the tri oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. It's Greg Hahn. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd's going wild. I can hear them. I think that's kind of a long walk to the stage. Are you, are you, are you, how, far, how far is it from the side of the stage yeah, that's, that's to the a, mic? It's a big club, Tom. I'm playing an arena, 8,000 okay. seats. Uh -huh. He's coming from the back. Mm. You're going to need some new material. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Ouch. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, it's 80,000 people. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, but we have to take a break. Oh, look at that. Okay. Uh, Greg Hahn and the drums, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Greg, thanks so much. I want to hear some more. Well, can, we, uh, can we come back with more? Is, is there more? Sure, I can play the drums all day. <laughs> I'll take a solo from now till we close the show. Hang out right there by the shell. They both walk slow with a simple pace. Both afraid to show their face, but only one has a built in place to hide. Turtles and whores, turtles and whores. I love them, turtles and whores. They both advertise a little tail, move so much you never get mail. They both go by the same nickname, Snapper. Snapper. Daddy never told about the birds and bees, but always talked about both these and made it clear only one was fit to eat. <laughs> turtles and whores. Yeah. Turtles and whores. I love them turtles and whores. Turtles and whores. Now, if you catch one, here's some advice. One is dirty and the other ain't nice. So be polite and always walk up from behind. <laughs> Make small talk, never let them see fear. Don't work alone, just bait or bear. And when you're done, just drop them by the river. <laughs> turtles and whores. Turtles and whores. I've caught both while fishing. I'm always on a mission. And they both hate the kitchen. Turtles and whores. <laughs> hey, this is Ron White, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Now, Mike, uh, we don't really know much about you. I think my favorite show right now is the Osbournes mm -hmm. on MTV. I yeah. feel that's the greatest. Because I was always a big Ozzy fan, like, back sure. in the day or whatever. Black Sabbath? Sure, yeah, all the Sabbath albums. But then the show comes out, and you see him, you know, and he's, you know, shuffling around and yelling at his kids just like every other dad, mm -hmm. you know. Well, it's a little different, you know. Listen, man, Jack, you, you, listen, man, you, you got to get the trash on the curb by nine in the morning, man. You know, just <laughs> sit there, you know, to the next, you know, next time, you know, the trash people come around. I can't have trash sitting around. He's yelling about trash, man. I can't, <laughs> I can't deal with this, you know. He's the prince of darkness. I know, yeah. It's like, you know, it's just like, I, I, you know, I spent all day cutting, you know, cutting out these coupons, man. I can't, I'm not spending five dollars on, you know, freaking grape nuts, you know. <laughs> they might as well take it to the next level. I, I want to see the, uh, that should be the next reality show, the Oz couple. Ozzy Osbourne and some other unintelligible foreigner living together in their little adventures, you know. Arnold Schwarzenegger runs in with an apron on. Listen to me, Ozzy. I, I can't have dishes sitting around the kitchen all over the place. I just, you know, I just said, breakfast man. I, I, you know, I mean, every time I go out of town, I come back, it's like a war zone in here. I can't live like this anymore. I was going to get around to you came running in here like a Nazi. I don't know. As soon as I learn how to do another impression, I'm getting another roommate. Man. Bob and Tom, 24-7. Comedy via your computer. Bob and Tom, 24-7. This is free in-home estimate.
Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show at the news desk. It's Christy Lee. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Jess Hooker joins us. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. I like this music. All this right. Is, this is good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Soothing. Yeah. Put this down as one of the, fav the favorites. <laughs> All right. So it's, okay. like, so it's like a theme song to a western. F. -bomb. Maybe that's why I like yeah. it. Kind of a neo western. Uh, look over the mesa. Look, those, a, look, look at those a, rocks. A whiskey Myers feel. I like it. Whiskey Myers. Oh, who's just, Whiskey Myers? They are phenomenal. Do oh. yourselves a favor. I've got right. tickets. You want to go? What? Yeah. What? Yes. What? Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fantastic. <laughs> done and done. It's a band. Yeah, yeah man. Myers. Yeah. You want to find John Wayne by Whiskey Myers, Jason? We'll see what these folks think of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to be hostile. I, uh, well, let's uh, return to the... Uh, we'll see if these sons of bitches can know what... what, what John, what can be. Oh. You deal in hostility. You're the one who started blatant hostility. Let's Just, go well, 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 there, working there with go. you, what was the... I'm sorry. Uh, okay. uh, what else is going on over there? Well, we had the Academy Awards last night. You know what I have? What do you have? Here's Al Pacino. Oh, Al... Yeah, so this Al Pacino, is a weird moment or something? Al Pacino um, came out to uh, present the best picture, and it went something like this. Only one will take the award for best picture. And uh, I have to go to the envelope for that, and I will. Here it comes. Well, he's not mentioned any of the other... And Maria, I see Oppenheimer... And it's... Yes. Yes. I'm a Thomas John yeah, people it, was, didn't... it was really odd because he didn't mention any of the no other nominees. You know, usually they walk out and they go, we have 10 nominees. Oh, yeah. So, you know, here we mm. had da-da-da-da-da-da-da. He just walked out and did See. that, and people were like... Did he really mean to He's say an actor Oppenheimer? And... You don't give these people lines. Was it a time frame? Like, were they no, up against it? No. So. no. I, I'm with Tom on the, you, you, Al Pacino's a notorious sort of weirdo. Yes. <laughs> when you have the weirdo do yeah. the it's main the thing, important part it's going to get night. a little weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure on this thing on the teleprompter, hi, my name is Al. Yeah, yeah. he's not going to exactly. do that. Yeah. Hi, my name is AI. Oh, wait a minute. No. Give it to yeah. Hanks. You give it to somebody who's semi-human. Uh, human yeah. still. Yes. <laughs> well, Trump, luckily, I, I, by the way, I love Al Pacino, but we know he's a weirdo. Yeah. Give me all you got. <laughs> yeah. Give me all you got. It was a bizarre moment, I got to tell you. And the well, other bizarre moment was when John Cena came out naked. That was pretty that interesting. Was funny. He looked real naked. He looked I don't know real. if he was, but No, he they showed real. it backstage. Um he they had he had one naked. of those Hollywood yeah. pouches on. For yes. far too long Hollywood has been objectifying uh, sp sp handsome men, uh -huh. and I think this is ridiculous and sickening. Uh -huh. here, here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see his waist, Christy? The way yeah. his good God. See, yeah. and it's just up for judging like this. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Really, getting all, uh, getting all meat. moist over there. He's poor man. <laughs> He's poor man. Getting <laughs> <laughs> all uh -huh. moist. <laughs> Wasn't that in celebration of an anniversary of a streaker at some yes, point? Yes, in 1974. Okay. Yeah, David oh, okay. oh, Did anybody yeah, ask David him, hey, John, who are you not wearing? Uh, <laughs> oh, that would have been it. That would have been funny. <laughs> he actually did present for costumes, though, yeah. so that was funny. Oh, they, 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 wrapped him, they wrapped him in a, like, curtain to so he could open the envelope because the envelope was covering his, you know, what? Yeah. Oh, wow. A haven't, larger envelope, I might add, than the other. Haven't they uh, had trouble with the best picture before? Didn't one of they them announce yeah. the wrong winner? Yeah. Warren, yeah. Beatty. Yeah. Warren, Warren Beatty, yeah. Warren Beatty. Yeah, Warren Beatty. Yeah, you'd think they would have that down by now. No, you, 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 good for, they gave the envelope to a weirdo and a weird thing yeah. happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the only one's talking about, so congratulations. Yeah, there you go. Next year, Mickey Rourke. <laughs> oh. oh, and the winner is, and he just eats the winner envelope. Is, hey. <laughs> that'd be yeah. that'd be a great have, the, have a category weirdest weirdest actor uh, when did off the, stage. Uh, no, Crispin Glover. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were talking about this last night. When did the Academy Awards become a comedy show and not a, a Hollywood glamour yeah. extravaganza? Always. Oh, yeah. always. It's always definitely always had comedy. Had, but, uh, had snarky, some uh, comedy. Carson but, was always the Bob best. Host. Bob Hope, but I mean, it was, it's just gotten weird. Who was the host? Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel. Kimmel. Okay. 
They should honest. come out with the best picture, and you don't know if it's cake or not. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> they slice. Is it cake? Oh, no, it's just an envelope. Oh, geez, it's actually Robert Downey Jr. We, oh, are, my we God. are so sorry, Robert. <laughs> yeah, Robert Downey Jr. came out, and he said, I'd like to thank my terrible childhood. Yeah. He stole my uh, line, and if I ever win anything, <laughs> I could uh, yeah. Terrible childhood, Don's why mm -hmm. I'm here. Well. Okay, thanks, Tom. For he was very his acceptance. Chick and I actually amazing. have a deal that if Chick wins, you know, when when Chick when, wins when, the award, right? yes. he's going to do it's an it's a Rowan Atkinson bit. Stand up from the audience, walk up on stage, angrily grab it, and walk right back. To the <laughs> right back. <laughs> <laughs> well, like he, he couldn't. Like, he couldn't be here. He's in Hollywood <laughs> making a bigger movie. Boy, that Rowan act. He's funny. Uh, Australian golfers witnessed an unusual sight. It says here, a horde of kangaroos stampeded through a golf course. This is not surprising to this American. I envision everywhere in Australia there are hordes of kangaroo. The prime minister's a kangaroo, isn't it? Galloping, galloping. Is hordes the phrase for a group of kangaroo? I don't know. Ha hmm. Haunch of kangaroo? I don't know. A, a pocket jump, of A kangaroo. jump of kangaroo? A cargo short? Because there's oh. so many pockets. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kangaroos hate it when the uh, kids play inside, don't they? <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, here's Whiskey Myers. Who wants to hear Whiskey Myers? I do. This is John. That's Eddie. Oh, that was just getting yeah. excited. Eddie. Very nice. Very nice. History. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we all know somebody, uh, uh, right? Vietnam uh, 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 Mr. Stephen Roach, or Rocha, posted a video of the kangaroos hopping across the golf courses in Australia at the Heritage Golf and Country Club in Victoria. It's, yes, it's unbelievable. Really he can be heard in the video asking the marsupials to not stand on my golf ball. Boy, they've got big feet, too. Hey, that kangaroo big. stole my ball. How about those kangaroos that look like... How about the kangaroos that oh look like gosh. they've been working out? They're yeah, all they're muscly and creepy. Cut, yeah. I yeah. mean, that is a lot of kangaroos. It looks like that scene in Jurassic Park. Uh -huh. Where those dinosaurs <laughs> yeah. go exactly. run and they're running through yes. them. Yeah. It's a kang bang, they call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you been sitting on that? Uh, I hadn't seen the video. That is great. Wow. You're right, though. It, it does look like the Jurassic Park where the dinosaurs are all going crazy. Man, if a kangaroo... Shat into your yard, you'd have something to clean up, wouldn't you? Wouldn't that be massive? Those are, um, the, yeah, the, those are the new hazards on hole eight. Man. <laughs> 300. Wow. A uh, second golfer took another video, Michael McCarthy. He replied with his own video that wrote that the parade of kangaroos felt like it went forever. Oh, my gosh. It does look like it's going well, forever. I didn't know they hung out in packs like that. I didn't either. Kangaroo Stampede sounds like the name of a cool band. Mm -hmm. uh, Here's open for whiskey, Meyer. Kangaroo stampede. <laughs> they, got, they got a whole thing about Australian history. I, I forget what it's called. But, uh, baby animals. They're the big Australian band, or they used to be anyway. Um, oh, love baby. the baby animals. Now, if you keep watching that, I, I did watch the end where the uh, yeah? a, a cowboy riding an ostrich comes out <laughs> swinging around a lasso. <laughs> a lasso? It's hard to ride an ostrich. It must be. David Crow taught us that. <laughs> I couldn't get a cart. Well, don't take one of the ostriches. <laughs> you know what you have to take with you if you're seeing uh, kangaroos or ostriches on the golf course? What? You want some musical background, don't you? Yeah. Want a, if you want a rifle. That's where your Raycon, if they're in season. I don't think you can hunt kangaroo in Australia, can It's my understanding they're kind of like deer at the side of the road. Is that right? Yeah, right. yeah people no, hit them all the time. I don't think you can thump, 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 thump. them. No, no, but people hit them a lot. Oh. And I don't, I don't know if there is a hunting season. I, that would be a fair question for okay. one of our Australian friends. Sure. Raycons offer amazing audio quality at half the price of other premium audio brands. 
Uh, don't believe me? Look at tens of thousands of five-star reviews on the Internet. Raycon's optimized gel tips fit every ear ever made, and they actually stay there. Maybe you're out walking the dog, working out, using a chat on the phone while multitasking. Raycon's stay in your ears. Plus, they have eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life. You don't have to worry about whether Raycons are up for the task, and they have the easy-to-use earbud Tap functions, noise isolation, awareness mode. Raycons have it all. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today and get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash Tom. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. Uh, Christy, you're not going to want to hear this. but uh, The Australian government uh, permits license holders to cull or shoot kangaroos resulting in the largest slaughter of land-based wildlife on the oh planet. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're right. I didn't want to hear that. So, Thanks. I thought they were national well, treasure. Do they have... Do they... Some... They have to have Raycon... Raycon. They have to have... <laughs> they have to have kangaroo heads on their wall somewhere, right? Oh, oh like deer? Like we have deer heads, right? Oh, my Don't goodness. They? I think they just Probably. do the... Since it's down under, they just do the feet. <laughs> Uh, when we come back, we have we have more sport sporting news coming up. Also, um, uh, a, a high school had to be evacuated. Turned out to be a, a fart uh, in a can that uh, took out the school. Oh, maybe we've got something to talk about with farts. We can. When we come I don't back. care. It was an accident. Uh, and uh, also, uh, we have um, Christy farted really loud in the studio. We there, have, yeah, I didn't there make it go. up. The world's oldest bread has made the news. Uh, if a picture paints a thousand words, uh, the oldest bread. Then yeah, like, I had a picture of the a thousand words, you little whippersnapper punk queen. <laughs> this is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, this is Rodney Carrington, and you are listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Thank you. Hey, hi, I'm Tom, this is Chick, that's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guest. Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass Mouth Horns Plus. Do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right, it all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or Deacon, Come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Aww. Tickets on sale now and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See you there! <laughs> I can't help but notice, sir, you're wearing extremely tight, um, uh, what are those called? They are called Lycra Spandex Pursuit Pants. Uh, now, is, pursuit? That a, is that a potato in the front there? or uh, <laughs> Tom. Glad to see you. Tom. <laughs> Tom. Sorry. It looks like Jim and the twins are pretty cozy this morning, sir. <laughs> Hurts to advertise. Yeah, man. I guess it does. Oh my God! <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, sir. He's smuggling <laughs> topsoil for an offshore development project. Well, yeah, I, I always end well, a White Castle. Really? Yeah, I was. Uh, God, I was so drunk, I thought I was in McDonald's. I ordered a quarter pounder. I got 500 hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say to you? Help me. Hey, thank you. Pick a number between 1 and 50. We'll ask our guests, then I'll just hit a random sound effect. We'll see if it fits the commercial. All right. 150, Clinton. Pick a number. 35. 35. That's Andy Moore Ford. Uh, 35. Here we go. Heavenly deals. At there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You'll think you've died and gone to pick car another. Heaven. Pick another number. And Clinton. Andy Moore for uh, 27. 27. Andy Moore for. Electrifying meals at Andy Moore Ford. <laughs> okay, pick another number. Go ahead, Clint. A any number. Eight. Eight. Okay. Oh Lord. Oh dear. They have body <laughs> shop. Yes, they have a body shop. <laughs> and and Andy Moore Ford. Ford. Any other number? Go ahead. Pick one more. Nineteen. That's. Ah! 
That's our manager screaming at the fabulous deals you'll find Where's that? at Andy Moore Ford. Okay. This is the Bob and Tom it's Show. On, this morning. Man, I wish I'd lived here today's show. Me too. <laughs> um, um, I wish I was here. Yeah. You know, there's a reason I'd never heard of this band. Why? Because this guy had to have his penis cut off for publicity. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I prefer I prefer musicians who can actually make it on their skill, not on their lack of a dick. <laughs> so. Yikes. I knew you did. I know how to make it in show That's business. That's what I said. <laughs> Yikes. I know how to make it in show business. First we whip it out, and then we take a cleaver. Mm -hmm. How does he pee? Yeah. Sitting down. <laughs> or all yeah. over the place. Yeah, well, <laughs> No, that's not true, Clint. How does he pee? Depends. <laughs> okay, oh, never mind. Oh. Sorry I asked. Hard copy all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so this is exclusive. Dogs die in the cargo hold? Occasionally. Occasionally. And then they just replace them with a dog that looks similar. They got a big <laughs> they got a big dog farm for these things. Now all the airlines share the same dog. Yeah, uh, Dave, uh, Dave, we need a shih tzu. Uh, <laughs> Uh, brown face, white feet. Uh, yeah, we need a sh Shih Tzu uh, Gate C27. Uh, it's a number yeah, eight. Yeah. Bring it down and, number uh, eight. Another, another newfie uh, coming, in, uh, coming in on United. Try to take care of that. Yeah, he's stiffer in a board. Come on in. Okay. The big danger at this time of year is the heat. If you, you know, they were down there, and if the plane is delayed on the you know, tarmac for any reason, it can be a problem. Mm -hmm. so, that was just a story this week that came out. Do the right thing. Drive your dog. Jeez. Warning folks that are flying their dogs about that. There you go. I ain't making this up. And if it's a small dog, like a little tiny little hand dog. Yeah, you can put it underneath your seat. No, just throw it out the window because those aren't real dogs. <laughs> <laughs> those aren't real dogs. This is cool. You know, I like doing radio. How can you change a dinosaur's <laughs> name? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, halfway through. Do you know halfway this, through. <laughs> do you know what the smallest dinosaur was? Uh, what? The clitoris. <laughs> <laughs> little red, pinkish dinosaur. Well, congratulations. Wow. You I finally got it, got it on here. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Way to go. <laughs> See, all that, all that filthy lunch talk, and now it's on the air. Are you happy now? Little Are you a big man saying uh, clitoris? Oh. Is that it? <laughs> See, I always thought the... <laughs> Join us again next time for <laughs> People Who Suck at Small Talk. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and the sign said anybody caught trespassing <laughs> will be shot on sight. So I jumped over the fence and yelled at the house, Hey, what gives me? Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of... Loads of curvy cleavage on display. <laughs> the thrill of victory. <laughs> and the agony of defeat. Don't touch those. Sorry. <laughs> the human drama of... Loads of curvy cleavage on display. <laughs> this is... The Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, hello, hello. Maybe anybody in there? this time we'll hear from, <laughs> that's right, more Howler Monkey news. Oh, yeah, Tom wasn't here for that. No, you didn't get to hear the Howler Monkey. Oh. I forget the story about the Howler Monkey, <laughs> but I remember, I remember I the it. sound effect, by oh, yeah. gosh. Scary. Let's see. Let's <laughs> it is scary. Crazy. What were the howler monkeys doing? U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers in Texas caught a man allegedly trying to smuggle howler monkeys into the country. Is that no, really? No, thank you. That's, yeah. That's really yes. their song? Yeah. yeah. Officers encountered the 29-year-old man trying to enter the U.S. at the Brownsville Metamorris International Bridge in a pickup truck. Where were the monkeys? In a, in a condom in his bunk? <laughs> no, Tom. <laughs> How big are these monkeys? No, that's tr that's tr yeah, too big for that. The yeah. two live howler monkeys were in the truck. I don't know what. Maybe they were just running around. It doesn't say they were in his pants. Were they, they howling? Did they you hear them? They had them hidden, hidden in the trunk. <laughs> back in the trunk. The monkeys are... Shouldn't you steal quieter monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. You those. guys want to hold it down back there? Oh, I, told uh, you, I told you they'd howl. <laughs> I am not. I am not cut out for smuggling. Uh, they would catch me. 
I'd be I'd be sweating and I'd answer for everything real too fast. No, no, I'm fine. What's your name? Drugs in my butt. <laughs> Damn it! Uh, I knew that was gonna happen. I have an itchy ass. <laughs> Dry. The monkeys will be housed at the Gladys Porter Zoo in Brownsville. Now you can go visit the Howler That's monkeys. That's nice. Yeah. That actually segues into something I have over here. Tom, Ooh. do you wanna do you wanna visit this? Is that right? What is that? The, the smuggling monkeys? Yeah, it does. It really does. That I know that sounds weird. But oh, I you know. You guys remember Pond Hill Farm where Tom talked about? <sighs> it, 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 we oh, were talking about Tom. Oh, my God. Oh, is this a syrup thing? You were shooting things at goats when you were yeah. a child. Oh, no. I, I, uh, I grew up about uh, maybe a mile from this place. And it's uh, it's in Harbor and Springs, Michigan. When you say grow up, you've spent summers, summers there. there. Yeah, summers, and I you're would, from Ohio. I would <laughs> well, I would ski there at the Boyne Highlands and Nubs Knob. Oh nubs my knob. God. I got your Nubs Knob. Nubs Knob. Yeah, yeah. Slob my Nubs Knob. The place that put I'm the not sure that the going down uh, Volga Road when I mentioned Nubs Knob, I you I, need of a course, good slob in that. Uh, in any event, yeah, it's but, but it's a place where they have these. I don't. I didn't bring it up. Someone else I, mentioned it. I did. I'm, oh, somebody else did. Yeah, that that uh, they've got these places where. Oh, I know what it was. It was that story about um shooting melons at goats yeah shooting melons at goats and they referenced that in there and they said that they have many other attractions now and that no goats were ever harmed when they would shoot well, projectiles at that's the goats. what they're going to say but, but it's a great restaurant and they they have wine and a winery a brewery a cafe and a market so they I remember were very correctly, kind. they have dressing in the bottle in the bottle well yes. they to go Tom dressing in the bottle. Oh, Whoa. thank you very much. Right? Holy hell. That's, That's my favorite police that. song. Yes, they have Dressing <laughs> in a bottle, dressing yeah. Uh, farmhouse dressing and spicy peanut sauce, actually. But wow. they also sent us this. Ready? Oh, Screaming Goat? Oh, Screaming Goat. Aww. I love the Screaming Goats. <laughs> but now, so it's imagine, Christy, like you've got a. Yes. We were talking about this place where you, they were catapulting stuff, mm -hmm. and this you, it's kind of like a cat. You sort of take this thing and you like a giant rubber band and you fire <laughs> stuff at the at the. In goats. the letter, it says exactly what it is. I, yeah. I mean, not I'm not questioning your memory by any means. I'm just they they talk about that it was actually apples oh, that okay. they okay. launched. Like slingshots. The, yeah. They slingshot no, 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 no. <laughs> They were catapulting. It was a catapult. <laughs> it was a catapult. Listening to you speak about your experiences brought back so many great memories. We assure you that no goats were harmed in sure. the squash rocket experience. Squash. Ah, squash. We, squash. We, we, have, we have moved beyond the squash rockets. We now call squash rocket 2.0 to an apple cannon. There you ah. go. Oh. Yeah. So, and then the, the critters are out there eating it. And, and mm -hmm. if you hit one... You hit them all. So be no. it. Uh, free, free dessert. I mean, we'll Doesn't apple forget. cannon sound like a euphemism for uh, uh, the back door? Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Give a tour in the apple cannon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> she begged me to do it in the apple cannon. So. <laughs> what are you going to do? I can't say. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. We're so I don't sorry know why. to I drag think... Jimmy and Marcy from Pond Hill through the... <laughs> I think the screaming goats are hilarious. I do too. I don't know. And then um, are those the screaming goats the ones that faint or are they? No, that's a different. That's, that's a fainting, fainting goat. goat. They're so yeah. totally different. Yeah. Totally. I don't know if you can crossbreed and you have a screaming fainting goat, but uh, <laughs> but you ever, you ever have anybody faint on you, Josh? I never have, and it's it is my goal to make somebody faint. How do you make someone <laughs> scare faint? them so badly oh, that they, they oh, pass out? I've yeah. never fainted. No, during sex, I think. I, I thought that's what you, that's what I yeah. thought that's what he meant. Oh, they faint. Is the that that auto oh, that's the, that's the old Bill Cosby. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, oh, she fainted. Hard remember. to make somebody who's already been chloroformed faint. <laughs> 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 Wake up and faint, will you? So this is all about the howler monkeys yeah. being yeah. smuggled and the screaming goats. That's a howler monkey. <laughs> so in this story, the did they goat. catch them because the monkeys were how? It doesn't say how they caught them. Okay. Mm. Well, it must have. It had. It had to be the noise. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite it, Leonard, it Leonard, Leonard Cohen song. They encountered the man. It said during a secondary <laughs> inspection, so it wasn't the first reason. It had to be oh. the noise. No, no, I think he means uh, howler monkey. Howler monkey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Howler Louia. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, I thought oh. I went. Oh. I was howler <laughs> monkey. <laughs> Uh, howler monkey. <laughs> howler caught, monkey. <laughs> they caught the first three, then the fourth, then the fifth. <laughs> caught the third, the fourth, the fifth. <laughs> howler monkey. So the, the, I'm not sure what originally made them stop the truck, but okay. the secondary inspection did find the monkeys. 
And are howler, are, are howler monkeys legal in the United States? I, I, I don't know. I doubt at, it. At the very least, bringing them, smuggling them over is not yeah. legal. And they're not attractive. They're kind of a weird-looking monkey. Well, you wouldn't make out with one? Like cute monkeys? Not like those handsome monkeys you want. Yeah, the handsome monkeys. <laughs> oh, I see. That, that Clooney monkey? <laughs> they are not attractive, she said. Well, not sorry. Like not all animals are for your banging. <laughs> Josh, I, you're the one who said they weren't attractive. You but freak. doesn't mean that I want to have sex. Well, with them. why did well, you use the word attractive? Yeah. Oh, these are not Weird. sexy. Yeah, not. <laughs> you're right. I don't want to have sex with it either. <laughs> How ugly can it be? Let me see the it's picture. Not, it's just kind of. Oh my God! That does nothing for me. No, nothing. <laughs> it does nothing for me. It looks like Margaret Dumont. Okay, I'm trying to find. Kind of a handsome looking monkey. No. Well, Tom would do it. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it looks sort of like a. Uh, a you give her a, to the the old Apple Highway. This looks like the one I'm looking at is uh, red haired. It looks kind of like a. Yeah. Kind of like an orang. Usually, you don't mm. like red hairs. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a. Oh, yeah. This one's sort of like, like a foxy, fox colored red. A foxy monkey now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, fox colored. No, no, you said fox foxy monkey. monkey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably, maybe. I'm, oh, they're not. Oh, they're all they they come in a variety of colors. Yes, oh my gosh. They do. This one looks like a uh, television commercial. It's got every color known to man in it. A rainbow color? Oh, here we go. Hey, were you done over there? No, I, I was you watch TV lately? <laughs> there isn't a product on that doesn't appeal to every single ethnicity. Yeah. But where's should the we, Amish guy? Should we be <laughs> talking maybe. about this? Oh, yeah. We got mm -hmm. Amish guy in a wheelchair next to You don't to see thing. anything yeah. positive? I saw a straight white time. couple in a commercial the other day. I bought a lottery ticket. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> the world is changing, and I'm terrified. <laughs> no, I swear to God, this... Josh, come here and look at this photo. All right. I I'm not sure. They must be in the act of howling. See this one down here on the right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Their mouths are all... The, I'm, it looks like a choir. Their mouths are all like this. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the four, they look, it looks like a quartet of howler monkeys. Hey, here's an idea. Don't ever make that face again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Is that your geez. O face? Yeah, they're, they're opening. Oh. By the way, I understand the howler monkeys are opening for straight no chaser. <laughs> they're a... Uh, it looks like you've smelled something bad. <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> With your red face. You I can't tell from this photograph how big they are. There's no scale. They're eight feet tall. No, <laughs> they're not. They're, not. they're probably not. like four feet tall. That's what I would Really? Guess. Yeah. That's pretty big. That's huge. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. You could, you could, no. well, you probably. 24 to 26 inches. Oh, oh, that's big. Feet, how many pounds tall. do they weigh? 60 to six. Oh, wait a minute. That face, is, is that big? 24 to 26 are... inches? <laughs> <laughs> Average. <laughs> This, okay, here we go. They weigh uh, the, the 14 pounds. 16 pounds, pounds okay. yeah. So why do they scream? Is it only when they're in distress, or is it how they communicate? That's how they uh, communicate. It's how yeah. they... Uh, okay. uh, this one means uh, I want a Starbucks. <laughs> oh. oh! They're very subtle. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, wait a minute. Wait, it's gr <laughs> grande decaf. Grande decaf is okay. what he's ordered. Here's yeah. the Colombian red howler. These are beautiful animals. Mm. And they were in this guy's trunk? I uh, I don't know where they were. I thought, I thought it was a pickup truck. He was in a pickup truck. I don't know if the they truck. were in a tote. I don't know. I will... what, what year was the pickup truck? Uh, I hope that they were. How about a little Chevy Love? I hope Remember that they, those? they were in a trench coat on top of each other. And one was wearing a hat. <laughs> How are you, sir? To see here. Hmm. You ever hear of the band, oh, the Monkees? No. <laughs> Why, yes, we have a passport. I mean, I have a passport. <laughs> <laughs> Who came up with that idea to, for kids to get on their shoulders Always and act funny. like an It the little rascals? It must have been, yeah. right? Just And the wonderful. Muppets did it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't believe I fell for Muppet Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, this is, uh, I'm surprised there isn't a band called the Howler Monkeys. Hmm. The Howlers? Yeah. Um, in any event. The gorillas uh, are going back out. Did you see that? Oh, really? I love the gorillas. Yeah. Yeah, they're fun. Is it? Mm -hmm. How, is it just one guy or is it a couple of them? I thought it was like three or four guys. Yeah. Yeah. Gorilla. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> they seem like one of those bands, though, where if you if you found out it was one dude, you're like, oh, right. yeah, all right. Yeah. And it's probably, uh, what's his face? Uh, CeeLo is, is, is actually <laughs> the gorilla. Uh, an Auburn University student. Oh, wait a minute. We want to do this first. The Detroit Pistons are in the middle of what has been... The worst four-year stretch in their history. They are now 10 and 53 on the season. Ooh. All of that losing has taken its toll on everyone involved. 
That apparently includes their general manager. That's right, Troy Weaver. He was the victim of heckling the other day at uh, a basketball game. Uh, one of the fans, he was wearing a Detroit Red Wings jersey. He was at a hockey game, and they he yelled out, you suck at your job. Oh, ooh, and that's boy, really? when Weaver said, you're lucky I don't beat your ass. Mm, and the mm. fan was kicked out. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Poor Detroit Pistons. If, overall performance as a general manager um, can't be measured in what we would say numbers. Just overall horribleness in drafting. And uh, as I said, 10 and 53. Wow. They're, not, they're not very good. The, they the, used to be. Pistons. They used to be real. There real was good. a time. <laughs> yeah. And that leads to one of my favorites. It's a sing along. It is. Miss Hooker, I, I don't know if you follow the uh, Pistons, but oh. uh, you certainly know this. Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah. Would yeah. you uh, like to uh, wear some um, Pistons gear, if you will? <laughs> Maybe some pants gear. or. Okay. Well, let, let's let's let Mr. Campbell uh, sing about it. Uh, the Detroit Pistons, former champs of basketball. I have so many souvenirs, it's hard to list them all. I have piston pants, I have piston shorts, I have piston beer mugs. Sometimes people don't even notice. I have piston ashtrays, I have piston shoes, I have piston basketballs. When I dribble, they do too. I wonder, do they make piston waste baskets? Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, so, uh, I no have pissed in waste baskets. <laughs> it's uh, under office and uh, supplies, <laughs> I would think. Yeah. The man was driving a 2015 Chevy pickup, if you want to know. With, with the, the monkeys. howler monkeys? Yes. They're but a gorgeous animals. It never does animal. say where the monkeys were inside the truck. What part of them are gorgeous? They're, They're beautiful creatures. They're a new world monkeys. They've got that prehensile tail, it looks like. I'm looking at this thing. New <laughs> world <laughs> monkeys. <laughs> A little rush for that. A little, run, little, little new world man for us. <laughs> I, I still like the that. Howler Luya. Yeah, Howler sure. monkeys are protected under the Convention on International Trade and Endangered Species. <laughs> Conden oh, but that convention, convention was a blast. Yeah. Huh? You see the hookers? <laughs> they're, they're all female gorillas. Uh, <laughs> prostitutes? Hey, buddy. You knew it. <laughs> hey, buddy. Are you into it? See these hands? <laughs> hey, mister. See these hands? <laughs> mister. Remember the hookers in that uh, Donna Summer song? Four prostitutes. No, I don't. <laughs> what? what are I don't. you talking about? Hey, Mister. No, never heard of the money. Never heard of it. Yeah. No. Uh, hey, Mister. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I, I, remember, oh. I remember the two old older ladies and uh, Andy Griffith. They were trying to. They, they kept calling Barney Bernie. I remember. <laughs> hey, Bernie. <laughs> Hello, doll. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> those girls. Yeah. Remember we'll, those? We'll find it. They were up to no good, huh? Oh, yeah. What's uh, What's coming up in sports? Uh, this is from Eric in Missouri, Arcadia, Missouri. Ah, oh, sure, yeah. yeah. He says, uh, I'd say the smell is how they found the howler monkeys. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Probably. Oh, good point. Mm. Oh, and it's a uh, mob or a troop for a group of kangaroos. Yes, Josh sent that too. A long, mm. lifelong listener, he How says. about that? Mob or a troop? <laughs> or a court. If they're a troop, they have to wear their troop number badge in the side. <laughs> we are the boys of 662. You bring the girls <laughs> and I'll bring the booze. Court has to be. our trusty scoutmaster lies drunk on the mess hall floor. Oh, sorry. That is fun for you. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think court is serious. I think that's a joke, Christy. Really? Kangaroo court. court? Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah, Kangaroo Court. I yeah. get it now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, coming up in sports, do we have More a world record? sports, uh, including uh, somebody won something uh, big, uh, at a car. They won a car, a new car at $5,000. They did something. Uh, two different people. They got to pay sales people. tax on that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm sure they did. Well, they probably didn't take it, though. That's a shame. Is that right? A lot of cars are uh, go un untaken. Unclaimed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've seen the I've seen those ads. <laughs> <They've> got, <laughs> right. they, there's a picture and it's got all these really cool looking jeeps. These jeeps go unclaimed in your in your zip code. Unclaimed money. <laughs> there are so many unclaimed. Jeeps. If you if you click on that, do they just send someone to your house? Just take your yeah. wallet. Give me your wallet. You're an idiot. <laughs> these Rolls Royces are unclaimed in your zip code. Oh, cool. I'll take one. Also. So coming up, um, uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to give too much of the story away. Here's your hint. Well, that's kind of impossible. Uh, no, just here's your hint. Weekend at Bernie's, real. 
Uh, a just, real corpse is walking around with guys? Uh, well, uh, kind of. Uh, kind of. <laughs> uh, and it's ladies. That's the astonishing thing about this. Weekend of Bernadette's? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Uh, the Bernie's still dead. Oh, and he's still a guy, but <laughs> his escorts are a couple ladies, allegedly. Uh, but this is the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> For a complete copy of the Bob and Tom Show contest rules, go to bobandtom.com slash contest dash rules. Or just scroll down to the bottom of the page. Morgan Freeman reading Little Miss Muffet sat on <laughs> eating her curd and whey. <laughs> Along came a spider. <laughs> it's too good. It's down perfect, man. I would, can you do Liam Neeson doing one? Three blind mice. <laughs> See how they run. <laughs> what are they running from? <laughs> I am dying. <laughs> a man who's kidnapped my daughter. <laughs> Right. Do you have any special skills? I don't know who they are. <laughs> I don't know what these mice want. But if they're looking for some cheese, I'll tell you this. I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm, tell you this. I'm loving this. Gosh, Pacino really and uh, Hickory Dickory. Hickory Dickory die. <laughs> the mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck three and all went wee. That can't, that's wrong. <laughs> Rub a dub dub, three men in a tub. <laughs> what were the three men in a tub doing? A butcher, -dub -dub, a baker, a tub. and a candlestick maker. <laughs> I know who you three are. <laughs> I know what the three of you do. But I'm going to tell you this. This bathtub doesn't have a lot of time. <laughs> hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven baked cheese flavor jalapeno ooey gooey spicy cheese it's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat perfect for game day parties or any time excuse me are um are you serious with it i mean why are you doing this me uh, the real me is right here i could easily be doing this we we don't need you man i uh, look there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh me, the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. <laughs> hey, Bob and Tom Show USA. <laughs> Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Larry King. Wow. Larry, Larry. Larry. <laughs> nice to see you. Let me sit down here. Oh, Ouch, oh. my back. <laughs> oh. oh. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, wow. Uh, well. You know, you're giving off a weird vibe when the Walmart greeter tells you to pound sand up your butt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Huh>? yeah. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> hey, what's with Cher and the sunny thing all of a sudden? Would somebody tell you, tell me, anything? Uh, anybody else now think the C word was invented because of her? <laughs> Cher, of course. Of course, uh -huh. yes. Yeah. And how about that Carol Channing thing, huh? Yeah. I guess she was singing Hello, Dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, dildo. Yeah, man. Hello, Hello dildo. dildo. <laughs> it's just, just only good got stuff. married. Only got it twice in her twice life. in forty-one, 41 years, years of marriage. marriage. Oh. Wow, she needs Viagra. And I said it before, but never, never address an Indian in war paint as Chief Big Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Just don't do it. And finally, I got to say, I got to say, kids, <laughs> uh -huh. it's been a stone gas being here, by the way. Uh -huh. I got to say, this body-piercing craze is getting out of control. 
you know, studs through the tongue, sure. rings through the nose, right. eyebrows, the nipples, the belly button, and now a series of interlocking rings and hoops through my schwanz. <laughs> oh, did I say my schwanz? <laughs> oh, somebody stop me. You know how <laughs> you know how embarrassing it is to go through the metal detector? <laughs> I'm sure. Larry King, you've got a solid nickels worth, kids. Thanks. I'm out. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out, Larry. I got to catch a play. Uh, thanks very Bye-bye. much, Larry. <laughs>
Boyle was the first winner of the promotion this season, winning a car from a local Toyota dealership. Uh, it was a lucky night for long-distance putters. A Butler University fan somewhere in Indianapolis uh, also made a full-court putt during the team's matchup against Xavier, and they won $5,000. Whoa! There you go. That's great. How about that? Hey, that man, they must have gone crazy, the place. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I think someone made a half-court shot a couple of nights those ago, Those skills too. competitions or something. Yes. Yeah, I think I, you're I, I, I think saw you're that, right, too. Right? Yeah, that's, those are always fun. Yes. It's usually some kind of insurance thing. I don't know if we have to get into the minutia of how <laughs> it's okay if someone wins. It, I think it adds to it that the venue has to buy this guy a new car, not that the insurance saves them. You've well, just ruined this for I most ruined people. It. <laughs> wow. You shat all over <laughs> it. <laughs> well, it's an insurance thing. I hope you know that. I see. Well, now I'm curious what he's talking about. In other words, if you if you want to do one of those events, you pay an insurance company whatever two thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. And then it doesn't matter what happens, and if they win, they get the car. Oh. So okay. They'll, they'll, so the insurance company pays for the car. Yeah, they'll gotcha. they'll, they'll they'll do. Okay. You know, a hundred schools will do that over one weekend, and yeah, makes every, sense. every two months, one guy wins a car. Meanwhile, right. it sends our premiums up a thousand percent. No, it doesn't affect your car. I guarantee they figure out how it does in some way. Oh, I God. guarantee it does. <laughs> yeah, that's, how that's how the buildings got so big. I see. Oh. Okay, what are you in big in, big insurance pocket now? We got we got to start making a that list of what, this things. Is dairy. We can't, no, I'm saying you. We can't say anything about insurance dairy. or dairy. No, yeah. the insurance. You're an idiot. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point in trying to explain how. It I don't think. I'm uh, being told on Twitter that I've the never. person that made that putt. Uh, was 12 years old that won the $5,000. Oh, good What? Time. Yeah, middle school. That's incredible. That's awesome. Oh, God, I hope you let him spend it all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> before, before he turns 13. Well. <laughs> if your kid won $5,000 at the age of 12, you would let them spend it? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> Why not? I mean, there'd be a, a, you know, maybe a couple things and put it in their college fund. sure yeah, yeah boring. i'd stand but i'd stand <laughs> right there beside him and start wiggling my fingers <laughs> mm. here you go how about a little something for the effort huh? <laughs> how about it little, no little daddy tax a group of young children have broken <laughs> oh a daddy ta daddy tax <laughs> world a group of young children have broken the guinness world record for the most traveled Toy ship. What? <laughs> yeah, this is really stupid. <laughs> the challenge yes, in is to listen to this. was undertaken by the Lewis brothers, Jerry and Larry. No, the Lewis brothers, Finn, Jackson, Kai, 3, 7, and 10, in collaboration with Ollie and Harry Ferguson, age 14 and 12. The Lewis family from Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. contacted the Ferguson brothers in Scotland about a new record after learning that the live tracker on the Ferguson's previous record-breaking ship, Adventure, went silent. What? What is this? We, yeah. we, uh, so much information, we don't know what <laughs> this is. I have no idea so what's going words. on. Get, I, I, you know what? I am going to start coming in at 3 a.m. <laughs> and doing these. They're heaving, <laughs> they're heaving a toy. So, uh, but, but, uh, what? what? What happened to... Uh, the, the live tracker. That's a that's a totally not a live story. tracker for what? To tell them where the ship is. What, what ship? ship? The little toy ship that they throw into the water. But they're they're starting a new one, right? Yeah, this is the one. That's I, the none winner. of us know. Forget it. <laughs> yeah, just rip you that blew out. it. I think it's very quite clear. <laughs> quite clear. No, this sentence well, comes out of well, nowhere. Could you keep reading? Uh, about no, a new record. No, you didn't gain our attention in the first two <laughs> after lines. After learning that the live tracker on the Ferguson's previous record-breaking ship, Adventure, went silent. So they wanted to do, do, do a new one. So they, they kindly created Adventure 2. We which, still have no which, idea. Which has no. sailed Where's nearly 10,000 miles. We did, they throw it in the ocean and it just see, floats around. that's what we yeah. had. It never that was not in there. That would have been important to they know. They threw it in the ocean. Yeah. I'd like to throw you in the ocean. <laughs> 
It says the most Without traveled tracker. toy ship. The most traveled toy ship could, could be on a sewers. truck. Yes. It could have yeah. been on a truck. Well, of course it's on the ocean. It's a sail. toy ship. It could be sitting in the front seat of a truck. Tom, it you... says here it set sail in 2020, <laughs> and its progress was monitored thanks to a live tracker, but that went dead as so that Chick, little ship god bless sunk. you it sank the little toy ships like i heard it ran into an ice cube <laughs> now that's funny that, well that is, that's, that's kind of funny i'm still piecing together the details to see if it is funny. i mean it is so stupid they just they just heave this dumb toy into the water and then they watch it because it's got a gps thing oh. well it's Halfway across the Pacific. I think that's kind of fascinating. I guess it's floating. Adventure 2 sailed a total of 9,593.34 miles. Now, Pat, the first Before one did, the battery <laughs> ran out. Pat, didn't you have a gig on the Adventure <laughs> 1, didn't you? I did. A good, good crowd, though. Oh, yeah. For a tiny little ship, it still seats 400. <laughs> <laughs> nice comedy room. Wow. Well, I think it's kind of interesting. The kids went, hey, let's see how far this gets. and They, yeah, went uh, uh, they say that the kids launched it. I think launching is a... I don't well, know. Kind of you launch a boat. It could yeah, have a trailer. You know that. Yeah. You hit it with a, little, a uh, thimble of champagne. A little generous. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's about two feet long. You take it. You Tabasco. Well, throw yeah. it in the water. <laughs> One of those little airplane bottles of yes. vodka or something. You hit it with that because it's uh, <laughs> It doesn't say what happened oh, to the first one. Toy, toy ship. Yeah, Is that it, really? Yeah, the little teeny thing there. That's cute. Oh, oh, that's the no. toy one? Oh, yeah. right. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> there's a big one, so yeah. then there's that little one. And so. the big one now, is that real or is that just... Taken well, you, what you can't see in that photograph of these Somalian pirates about to come, <laughs> come on board. I'm captain now. <laughs> uh, what, what does he say? Look at me. What is it again? I'm the captain now. Okay, I'm very good. Okay, uh, what's coming up in sports? <laughs> I, I honest, I honestly I gave up. Who knows now? I mean, after that, I don't know. Uh, okay, we we have a. Yeah, you don't have to say. <laughs> we have a we, No, we do have. We have. We do have uh, freaks. Um, um, anatomical freaks in the news. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. That can't be real. No. Oh, it is, yeah. No. Anatomical you you don't want to see the photograph. No, oh, we can't no. be. It's not a human. <laughs> Did you hear? It does. Oh, my gosh. Anatomical It's freak. not a human. It's not human. It's a no. robot? No. No, it's, it's another an, critter. It's an animal. Oh. Um, oh, boy. Oh, is it like a dog like with a two, two heads? Yeah. You're close. <laughs> you did oh no more gosh. guesses. When oh we come God. back, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Hey, hi, I'm Tom. This is Chick. That's Josh. And this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston. The Bob and Tom Show is coming. That's right. Rock 105 WKLC bringing us to town with a live broadcast with... Special guest Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns Plus Don't Forget. Did you see the word Don't Forget? <laughs> no, but it's all, but it's like it's like it half a sentence. Don't miss an yeah, amazing it's just like comedy don't show. Miss amazing Start is a over. Run word. Hey, Charleston. It's the Bob and Tom Show. That's right. And our friends from Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live broadcast. Speech. <laughs> Speech. Speechery. One more time. Here we go. This for sure. Here we go. All right. Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom show coming to, yes, your area from Rock 105 WKLC. They're bringing us to town for a live show. Special guest. Duke Tomato. <laughs> you nerds. <laughs> Start over. Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guest Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns. Plus, do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right. It all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston, if you come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold, and all hosted by yourself, <laughs> yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All hosted by Tom and Christy. Aww. Tickets on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Time at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See you there! Like a 
playing with my baby I finger and I pluck her I love to play an island song So won't you play along My Honolulu baby likes to play my ukulele She strums it and she hums it She loves to sing an island song So won't you sing along Ukulele, baby, you can play me, you can lay me, satisfy me in Hawaii. Ukulele, lady, you can lay me. My ukulele, baby. Ukulele, baby, licky, licky on my wiki, wanna lay you in Waimea. Ukulele, lady, you can lay me. My ukulele, baby. I do it all the time. You What's actually that? you actually take a nail and pound it into your penis on purpose? Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, really? do, you, do you use a nail gun or do you use a regular traditional hammer and nail? Oh, I, I'm I'm not conservative guy, just use a nail. Okay. Oh, okay. In fact, I was at the hardware store the other day picking up a nail just for that. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And uh I uh took it up to the counter, the guy goes, uh, that'll be a dollar. I go, Great, he goes, That'll be a dollar four with tax. I go, tax? Where do I am? Kinky? Uh, <laughs> tax, too. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Mark Sweeney. And you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Comedian uh, Greg Hahn is here with us. Uh-huh. I love going on dates. You get to go to the girl's place and meet her pets. They always have cats. It's always uh-huh. cats. It's never anything cool like a wild dingo or wolverine. <laughs> it's never a venomous duck or a bat. A <laughs> venomous <laughs> duck? You get like a porcupine. It's usually cat. Usually two cats. Like a little one she just rescued from the trash 10 seconds ago. Just got run over by a train or something. Still has leaves stuck to its rear end. It's bulimic and anemic. Then <laughs> the girl's going to tell you like the story how she met the cat. Oh, I put some, I put some milk out on Tuesday. She drank all the milk and came back on Wednesday. That's a beautiful story. Take your top off. (laughs) (laughs) Hello. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. I'm going to chuck all. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Jess Hooker's here. Hi. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. There's Ace Cosby. (laughs) I'm 
I, I'm so sorry. Okay. I was watching Pat. Um, yeah, what a weird thing for me to do it's just okay. now. I was watching Pat. His mic wasn't working. And I was just watching him kind of talk to nothing or whatever. <laughs> and then I just assumed you said my name. And I said, oh. <laughs> but what did you say? Jess uh, Rooker. Oh, and I just went, yeah, hey, yeah, check. Yeah. <laughs> I should not be on the radio. It's fine. I didn't want to talk to him anyway. <laughs> Uh, I'm a chicken. Here's Tom. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I, I I I missed a big story on Friday. What? I was on a ski trip in Colorado. Had a great time, and yeah, um, yeah. you guys were talking about uh, cold <laughs> weather. It was a nice, uh, it was seasonably chilly, but perfect uh, for skiing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess it was so cold at the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, oh, yeah. one of their playoff games, that several fans lost uh, fingers, thumbs, toes. Uh, had to be amputated yeah. due to frostbite. Last count, they said they had 12 people that had to get. Uh, Toes and fingers amputated directly caused. Well, that's by. they're only they're only the, the the guy reporting only had twelve digits left, <laughs> so they, they the count could have been higher. It could have been higher. Been. Uh, but Pat has a, a little tribute. Could you play that for us again, Pat? Sure, sure. Oh, wait a minute, it's not it's not Pat. Who's in there? It's well, I could be a little uh, Tony Bennett, a Sinatra cat, oh, any guy you if you'd go. like. <laughs> Lost a finger when the Chiefs played San Francisco. Uh, they, they were playing the Dolphins, Pat. Doesn't matter. Don't let the truth get in the way of a good song, Chick. Okay, okay. <laughs> you're right. I got gangrene <laughs> below the knee. I lost a foot. Where did my fist go? <laughs> I love my team, the Kansas City Chiefs. Everybody, good morning to you. It's always good to see you, Jess. Uh, thank Thanks. you very much. Nice tribute to Tony, Frank. People freezing. We said it was minus four with a wind chill. 27 below, yeah. Oh, that's well, They just didn't prepare. Yeah, they... Uh, no, that's ridiculous. Buy some hot hands. Yeah, that's on them. We build, a lot. Uh, build a dome. You're a billionaire. Come on. Mm. We, well, then, as Josh said on, on Friday, he anticipated your problem with this story and you said that uh, Tom also gets upset when the roof isn't open when weather says it can be open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when he when he wants it closed, uh, yeah. there is no yeah, it, it's so you don't believe in choice. You can't make him uh, <laughs> so That's fine. No, no, no. no. You're you're anti choice. That's that's fine. I am. I am. I'm against uh, decision making. What is that one listener? <laughs> one listener told us what Tom what Tom hates and likes or what is it? Uh, Tom, uh, there are two things in life yeah. Tom uh, doesn't uh, care for. Right. Change and the way things are. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> I, I, you nailed it. <laughs> now, uh, exactly right. Pat, uh, speaking of uh, anomalies uh, with the fingers being not lopped off because of the cold weather, um, this is a, 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 I promoted this uh, story. It's fascinating. Uh, Christy has it. It's about a, a, a calf born on a farm in Louisiana. Oh, oh that sounds man. sweet. Oh, okay, no. Hold on a second. But how did this, I mean, this happens every day, I would think. I, um, this has no. got to be one with this like a special two calf. Head. It's yeah. got to oh, be two I, You know what? I had what put it all it the freak? way at the back, hoping we would not oh, have time for it. Here, yeah. here. A freak. A he rare two faced freak. calf was born on a farm in Louisiana. This is oh. cat with, it's, it's a calf with two faces. Yeah, and Eric and Don Brew. You can't get a straight answer out of it. It tells me one thing, tells you another. <laughs> the owners of Brew Farms in Cossonade said the calf born last week was named De Face, of course, De to French. They said De Face. <laughs> Look at De Face. <laughs> this was what? Where? This was in where? This was in Louisiana. Tom. Oh, okay. I was hoping it was oh, in Florida. There's French there. Why? Why in Florida? <laughs> oh, because it'd be near Deland. <laughs> De Face is near Deland. Deland, De which is of course near. Anyone class? I'm not playing. Me either. <laughs> they said the chance of this type of birth is one in 400 million. Hmm. Though the calf has beaten the odds and continues to flourish eight days after she was born, Don Brewer says the animal will likely have a short lifespan. Oh, jeez. I'm just... So two faces, one head? So is it... Why did they yeah. just name it She's veal? under the care of several veterinarians. <laughs> Does it have like two mouths and four eyes? You want to see a picture? I don't. Is that what you want? I do. It's too I sad. I want to see it. All right. Make a good double cheeseburger. <laughs> Well, there, that is a damn good joke. Actually, it's right here. If, if it's if it's two-faced, it's a two-faced cow 
So it's the arch nemesis of Bat Cow. No! <laughs> it's really, oh, man. Is it sad? It's so bat sad. Cow. Remember and two, it's really hard to tell. I do. Remember Two-Face? Of course, of course. <laughs> not what I'm objecting to. Harvey okay. Dent, Two-Face. No, it, so it's, it's like from the nose down, it goes out, and there's two faces. Yeah. That's and a shame. The, yeah. I, it's very One forehead. Yeah. Is it, I, I don't understand astrology. Is it a Gemini? By astrology? Oh. <laughs> it's very, I'm not looking. I don't like to see uh, things no, you like don't see it it's pretty color it's a beautiful color yeah do the, uh, the faces match or is like the left side a hot dog and the right side a hamburger four eyes two noses two mouths two ears yeah. uh, man you know what it likes to dress up in uh -oh. a moo moo <laughs> Two, two, two faces. Two moves. There, yeah. two, moves. Like two, moves. <laughs> two faces. So that they should send it right to Washington and give it a seat in the Congress. Oh, we're getting political. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Mark Russell. <laughs> how are you? How are you? Now, does that mean that um, it was uh, seated twice, if you will? No, it probably means there were t yes, in a, in a way. So, in like that in utero. The, the the other one didn't wasn't completely didn't ingested come, yeah. by the so but is it two separate seeds so like is the right mm. face uh, uh, Harry the bull and the and the, and the I left think face when they're connected uh, it's one that splits right, right? I think yeah, so so yeah. it would be oh, so it's not like identical he looks like twins. Harry the bull on this side and looks like Farmer Johnson no, on this side oh jeez exactly yeah that'd be <laughs> <laughs> oh God! You know, you know Honey, can I talk to you? I don't, Saturday night, you have a couple drinks. <laughs> Head to the barn. <laughs> Head to yeah, the barn. Bars. Well, the wife's got a headache. How about you, Bessie? <laughs> well, well, well. So, uh, good luck. Well, to this don't this uh, Google Two Face Cow. No, don't. There oh, are no, there hundreds are of, of them. Aww, That's creepy. Shame. Yeah, I don't care for that. Okay, well, so much. Do we have anything pleasant in the news? <laughs> Are we done with sports? Yes, sir. Oh. Oh, man. Uh, a Wisconsin man whose actual name is Deez Nuts has been arrested for <laughs> alleged disturbance in Green Bay. Deez Nuts. Deez Citing Deez a criminal Nuts. complaint, WFRV-TV. We've got the fever. <laughs> no. <laughs> Reports the officers responded to the disturbance and found three people at the scene. Two of the individuals told officers that they had been arguing with the third identified as Mr. D's Nuts Kroll over the phone. Hours later, the two people arrived at Kroll's residence. When he opened the door, he allegedly punched one of them in the shoulder. The 42-year-old appeared to be highly intoxicated and also is accused of getting out a BB gun. <laughs> Kroll, who's identified on his Wisconsin ID card as D's Nuts Lee Kroll, was charged with battery and disorderly conduct and use of a dangerous weapon. So his, his name has been legally changed. Apparently, D's nuts. Mm -hmm. What is ridiculous? <laughs> so they call him D's or Diesel or <laughs> Mr. Nuts. He probably lost at fantasy football or something. Oh that yeah, like something they yeah. would do. There you go. So uh, <laughs> he's so he's currently <laughs> D's nuts is currently detained. Yeah. <laughs> In Florida? This continues our D. Yeah. yeah. D -hunk. Oh, God. Was it in Florida? No, but it oh. was. No. No, it was in Green Bay. Oh. Yeah. That's not too far from Florida, though, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of people in Green Bay, uh, summer in Florida. Sure. Down there for the but, winter. But they wish they're right now. Yeah. Spring yeah. break. Yeah. Have you seen the whole thing about Miami in spring break? Yeah, yeah. they're shutting it down. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're running commercials saying, don't, 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 go. don't come here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of the parking lots are $100 a night. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. To park they're, your car. They're doing serious curfews. And well, what, does Miami hate money? Why are they doing No, that? it's the underage drinking that happens for the next couple of weeks because college spring Not break. just that. <laughs> There's oh. a lot more going on. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. But they, they have an ad campaign, don't come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Hmm. Well, they've yeah. had some serious issues in the last couple of spring breaks down Yikes. there. Yikes. So, um, anyways, Mr. D's Nuts is in trouble. So, sorry to hear that, Mr. Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nuts? <laughs> what well, at least he kept bag. his last name. It's not just D's Nuts, it's D's Nuts Kroll. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, if he's yeah. going to change his name, change yeah. his last name to Nuts. Yeah, exactly. Yes. These big old nuts. What if he has a daughter? <laughs> <laughs> big old nuts. Put a middle name in or there, a son. I don't know. I guess it Why? What would he be called? Dem nuts. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> D's nuts and dim nuts. <laughs> and doe's nuts? Uh, D's, dim, and doe's. <laughs> doe's nuts? No? I, I like that. Doe's nuts? Uh, you, li you like that? Yeah, it makes more All sense. Right. Okay. Then who wants to be D's nuts junior when you can be doe's nuts? Doe's that nuts. When, when someone calls up your house, uh, is D's nuts there? No. Big D's nuts or little D's nuts? This is all dumb nuts. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no chance this guy offers anything to society, is there? Uh, I think you're. I'm, I'm wondering if it's one of those uh, gambling fantasy She's football right. losses. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not it. Professor D's nuts. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm sure yeah. it isn't. Yeah, or no. Reverend. Yeah. Right. Yeah, or Doctor D's nuts. Yeah. Well, my neurosurgeon, Dr. D's Nuts. <laughs> I had trouble getting a hold of you. Did you change your name to D's Nuts? I, I did. Uh, yeah, thank you for noticing. <laughs> D's, D's Nuts is scrubbing up. He's on the phone with those nuts. Uh, yeah, sorry, all right. nuts. Come on. May, uh, uh, right now, the Bob and Tom Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Uh, this is a great idea. Uh, applying contemporary technology to the world of therapy. Uh, squeeze in some time to help yourself and find out what's important to you. And BetterHelp has a really good idea, and that is uh, to uh, save yourself a lot of time and have therapy fit into your life and into your schedule. The way it works is you fill out a brief questionnaire. You'll get matched with a licensed therapist, one of more than 25,000 therapists working with BetterHelp. And by the way, you can switch therapists anytime, no additional charge. And the way it works is the therapy itself is also done online. So it can be done with a uh, camera on, back and forth like a FaceTime call or a Zoom meeting, or it can be done just speaking on the phone, or it can be done uh, texting back and forth, whatever works for you. And also, that's that's what this is all about, really, is about uh, flexibility and uh, saving time so you have more time in your life and uh, time to uh, find out what is making you happy in this world with the world of therapy. So encounter therapy through better help. And how do you find it? Well, you go to betterhelp.com slash BT show today. That'll knock 10% off your first month, by the way, if you add that slash BT show part. It's BetterHelp, H E L P, betterhelp.com slash BT show. And the Bob and Tom show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Coming up, we have a love letter for this guy. He is comedian Greg Warren. Also coming up a little bit later this morning, comedian Paul Reiser. This is the Bob and Tom show. Hey, this is Frank Caliendo, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Greg Warren on the. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or Anytime. Excuse me. Are um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We we don't need you, man. I uh, look. There's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin cheese, jalapeno flavored oven baked cheese. It's now available in Gardner's oven baked bundle package. So try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. That's why you're single. That's all. What? Are we? Wait a minute. I'm sorry. We're back live. Um, back with that. Not your tongue. He was Th talking about me because I went like this. No, 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 no. I'll tell you what it was. You see, you don't, you're not even aware of what you just did. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We're live in the Napa Auto Parts studios. You're Coming up, our, in, our interview with Donald Fagan. You're so Steely Dan. stupid. You don't you know, know what you're no, saying. No, no, we're trying to make conversation. Just before the mic's open, Josh goes, hey, uh, my toilet seat's uh, on the way. Yeah, that's right. He's excited about right. it. Right. It was something we had did discussed. You, did you hear what Tom said? We were trying to make conversation. Tom doesn't he didn't have speak conversations. A word during no. the break. He, he doesn't kept say his anything. Headphones they invented on. the phrase, he talks at, at me. You. Yes. <clears throat> I thought it was like, I mean, Josh, okay, you're on a first date. Let's yes. just say, let's just say, and 
you know, there's some nice music in the background. You're at a nice restaurant, and uh, <laughs> the Here waiter comes up. You order a, some sort of cocktail. I assume. What, so, what do you? What's your oh, beverage of choice? Uh, oh, I might have a, uh, a, a tequila and a okay. beer. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, uh, together. A beer. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. A beer and shot. Why not? As you can uh, what see, he's as thinking can... is here. You <laughs> don't look like an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's thinking. Oh no, no. I think he looks like one. Um, and then <laughs> far farthest from the truth. And then, go ahead. And then this this young lady orders something, and then you say, "Where's the conversation?" Conversation starter. Hey, uh, my uh, my new toilet seats. Uh, I just got a thing from Amazon. It's on the way. <laughs> and then she goes. Yeah, I'm sure that's oh, what wait, you would Waiter, do. could I get an Uber? I've got to get out of here. I got a thing. I had a. Oh my God, the way your brain operates. I know it's amazing. Fascinating. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. So your okay. new toilet seat. Something you want to, you want to tell us why? Well, because no, we were talking because I'm tired <laughs> of my vacuum cleaner, and we, Christy and I were talking about vacuum, and I'm going to order the one she has. Yeah, you're replacing your vacuum. I love my vacuum. I'm tired so, of my vacuum. so to enter the conversation, you said, "Wow, that's." really interesting. Hey, my toilet seat's on the way. <laughs> because the other okay, day I on. mentioned just that I broke about it. it. Josh, <laughs> I love you, but I think he might be right. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying it's kind of a, kind of a conversation killer, really. I knew we only had four seconds left in the break. It's kind of a funny I thing. I thought I would, yes. You know what? Oh, oh, I, I thought I, I was, <laughs> I thought I was bringing up a topic you, that you would enjoy. You no, know, I get Josh. I know what he was trying to do. Okay, sir. I didn't understand. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, it took just over a year, but about six months longer than I had in the pool, but it finally happened. Oh, you had, you Josh, had the, you had the under? Josh, you, I, had, I, I, I would have, I would have taken the under too. Josh now openly <laughs> hates Tom. I had the under myself. I, Congratulations. But that was when they said I couldn't play because I was, I couldn't play. Really. <laughs>
the up and up, huh? So is the is, is, is it a is it a multi floor condo? Uh, yeah, yeah. And is it water damage just in the lower level? No, no, I got them all. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, nice. I got I got them all in the neighbor downstairs. Oh, oh yeah, oh, all right. Goodness gracious. Yeah, real popular around the complex. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, sorry to hear that. Well, um, <clears throat> there he is. Hey, but, water log. But it'll make you extra funny <laughs> this weekend at the Funny Bone. And then I'm looking at your schedule. You're going to be at the, uh, at the um, uh, let's see, March 20th. It's a Wednesday at the NCAA Wrestling Show in Kansas City, Missouri. Now, you're a former and very fine college wrestler, am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I very former, but yeah, there, what, there's, uh, my dad and I go to the nationals every year in this, um, I'm going to do a show the night before the nationals in Kansas city for mostly for wrestling fans. Cool. Do, do you have a lot of wrestling stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've heard some of it, Tom. Hmm. Yeah. I'm just curious if you have like yeah. a whole, like a 30 minute wrestling. I think I could probably punk. do 30 minutes on wrestling. I have no yeah. doubt. Yeah. 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 That's good stuff. Uh, I was telling a story this weekend. I, I told you guys about that time when uh, I laid down at Northern Iowa. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, acor yeah. According to my coach. Uh, <laughs> but I just remembered uh, we had practice like the, uh, the he, he was real mad at me. And we had practice like two days later. And it was a horrible, really hard practice. And uh, at the end of practice, I was dead. Everybody was dead. And he goes, guys, we're not done. Meet me at the bottom of the stairs. We're going to run stairs. Uh. Those, <laughs> Those things were horrible. You would just like run up like twenty flights of stairs and down and up. And I, I legitimately had a bad back. And I, it was my first year there. And I, I turned to my friend uh, Darren Davis. I go, hey man, uh, my back's killing me. I go, I don't think I can run these stairs. I go, you think if I ask coach if I could just ride the exercise bike instead of run the stairs, he'd be cool with it? And he goes, yeah, you, you should ask him. <laughs> 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 See, how is it that you guys know the answer to that question right now? I did not. That, And I hate to say this about my teammate, but I'm not sure Davis had my best interest in yeah. <laughs> Well, it didn't go well. No, no. At least you don't have to run stairs now. Is it your, I guess, the, just the basement stairs? Yeah, 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 up and down a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah there's yeah, a, there's a, uh, looking on the bright side, right, yeah. Tom? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be nice if your brother had a ranch. <laughs> Yeah, could nice ranch house. You wouldn't have to go down the stairs. Uh, he's got all kinds of stuff down here, guys. A pool table, shuffleboard, ping oh, pong. Wow. Oh, that's the place oh. to be. He yeah. seems yeah, uh, yeah. very, uh, very successful, your brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he does well. Uh, wow. <laughs> Good. What's, our, what's our topic today, Greg? Oh, uh, it's an important topic, Tom. I want to talk about uh, the history of bouncy houses. <laughs> wow. Uh, Boy, you yeah. are in the sweet spot here, yeah. buddy. This could Is that be, right? This could be Tom's favorite topic. He loves it. Really? He, yeah, I, I have one. He, he owns, owns his actually, own have, bouncy house. I actually house. have two now that I think about it. Two? Wow. Yeah. My, yeah. Brother, my brother owned one uh, for a while, um, also known as Moon Bounce, Astro Jump, Jump Jump, Brinka Brinka. Uh, in El Paso, they call them jumping balloons, hmm. moonwalk. Uh, in South Africa, they call them jolly jumpers. My favorite name, boingalows. Oh, yeah, <laughs> cool. Uh, and in the UK, they call them bouncy castles. In the uh, 80s, I had an oingo boingalow. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It, was pretty, it was a dead man's party in there. <laughs> <laughs> Who could ask for more? <laughs> uh, 1959, John Skurlock, uh, he is a guy that used to work for NASA. He was an engineer, and he was testing out his inflatable tennis court cover, <laughs> and he noticed uh, his employees were jumping up and down on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he, uh, he he got an idea for an inflatable walkway. He called it the spacewalk, huh. uh, and that's that's how we got the first one. Uh he still fired those guys. I mean, they were jacking around. You got to, you sure. can't let that happen. Oh, yeah. Even you got to let them go. <laughs> you got to let them go. <laughs> John's wife, Frances, uh, got the idea to rent these things out for birthday parties, company picnics, and other special events. Um, in the late 1960s, they added walls for safety. Yeah. Whoa, Which whoa, means whoa. they mean they was just like a big mat that you would jump on at the time. Yeah, yeah, Christy. That, that, <laughs> yeah, 
That means in the early to mid 1960s, kids were flying all over the place. Oh yeah, I haven't done a lot of research. But they say uh, the the mid 60s was a heyday for pediatric orthopedic surgeons. Uh, And then in uh, 67, they put a roof on it, and it uh, it got hot. Like a greenhouse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like real hot. And then in, in 1974, they came up with a product called Jupiter Jump. That's uh, where they just had like four inflated columns, and then there was netting, sort of netting walls to make it cooler. Smart. Um, I have a, a theory between 67 and 74. That was also the uh, the heart of the uh, Vietnam War. And I, I think that the... Uh, before they put the netting up, these these uh, bouncy houses, the the climate in there was just like Vietnam. So if a kid was doing well in there with the heat, they uh, they sent him right to the Marines. <laughs> really? It's just a it's just a theory at this point. Guys. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, Skurlock also invented the inflatable rescue pads that firefighters use. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Oh. Did did it's he cool did, did he invent the the pits for um. Uh, pole vaulters? I don't think so. Those are like just the like those like kind of square foam in foam there, mat. right? Foam mats, yeah. Mm. There was a period of time where, the, Pat, when you did it, was it uh, the blow-up kind? It was foam. Big uh, big things of big, foam. Big, thick thing of yeah, foam. Big blocks of foam. Blocks yeah. of foam. What's this guy's yeah. name, Greg? Skurlock, John Skurlock. Oh, so Tom, no, uh, no pits, Skurlock. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought of that. I didn't know how to get wow. to it. Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> I did not think of that. That was a uh, nice job, guys. Uh, uh, I always wonder with those firefighter pads, like if somebody, you know, jumps off the top of the building and is rescued and the firefighters uh, come to put the blanket around them, they're like, no, no, I, I just want to jump for a while if it's cool, guys. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> those are always great in cartoons. Whenever they had a cartoon, they would do it. They'd bounce right back up to where the flames yeah. were. Yeah, it was backfire. Oh, yeah, it backfire. Do they, yeah. So do they still have those? Do they still set that kind of thing up if those people have to jump? They must. I think something, so. yeah. Wow. Man. Yeah. Uh, it says here there is an in- increasing... Interest in the use of bouncy houses for more diverse applications, such, such as disaster relief shelters and military training simulations. I don't know about this. Like, uh, ma'am, <laughs> I, I'm very, very sorry that the tornado destroyed your home, but uh, do you like jumping? <laughs> 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 or, or, or the military training simula- yeah, simulations. That. What is this, the, guys? Uh, we've noticed that this enemy we're going to face tends to shoot at your feet, so <laughs> we're going to put you through this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, it's a five hundred million dollar business, guys. Whoa. Uh, Josh, ask me how that uh, business is trending. How's that been business trending, Greg? Oh, it's up and down. No, oh, sure. Oh, okay, that very it good. It sure good. is. Hey, now. Tom, you said you've got a, a, a couple of these things. I, I want to give you some advice, and you probably don't need it, but uh, after doing some research on bouncy houses, make sure you secure those things. Oh. Uh, stake yeah, them yeah. down. Yeah, they have a stake thing in the corner. Mm-hmm. Okay, good, because these things blow away. Like, they have carried children very far uh the the wind tends to knock them over one bouncy house blew away and struck a bystander (laughs) i think that bystander was the wicked witch of the west (laughs) on top of her (laughs) (laughs) and uh i saw a picture of her legs very unattractive oh (laughs) yeah yeah they're (laughs) hideous yeah yeah those socks were terrible weren't they yeah yeah um, this is, it, when you do research on bouncy houses on the internet, guys, guess uh, what sites come up the most? Porn. No, uh, Josh. <laughs> well, I think you're wrong. <laughs> it's, there's just very few serious journalists covering this topic. It's all bouncy house companies. That's, let's oh. say it's like, you, so that the, um. The data is a little slanted. You know, it's all basically trying to tell you why you should get one. Um, 
This says, uh, um, this one guy said, you know, that, that the wind was a very, very a big problem with these things. And uh, make taking wind measurements part of the fun of the event. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't see how. No, no, Timmy, uh, don't eat the anemometer. Uh, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> That's what every kid wants at a birthday yeah. party: amateur <laughs> meteorology. <laughs> yeah. Thirteen uh, percent of all birthday parties have a bouncy house. Hmm. Huh. Uh, they they cost like two to three hundred dollars to rent. Uh, they last, Tom, I don't know if you can verify this, uh, they last about five to seven years, would you say? Yeah, I, I'd rented them so many times, you can buy a really good one for a few hundred dollars. There you go. Yeah, my, my brother had one, he bought one, and uh, he also, for some reason, there was a period of time when he had a lot of frozen meat, and uh, his deal was <laughs> the first kid to be able to jump up and touch the ceiling got to take home frozen meat to their family. <laughs> Wow. wow. Is that right? That sounds like fun. Yes. Yeah, it's a pretty, I, I, pretty I, good deal there. I Googled this, and here's a place that has a wedding bouncy castle. What? Oh, that's fun. That's wow. a real, that'd be real fun. Uh, designed, designed for a wedding. It says the white inflatable castles designed for adults and children, um, decorated with fabric and floral arrangements. Uh, to rent it, it's 400 bucks. Are you supposed cool. to get married in it? Or is it for the reception just for the kids to play in? Uh, it looks to me, judging by this photograph, that... Uh, uh, yeah, you could, every, but it's white, of course, and it looks like a wedding chapel. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, um, I, pretty. It would be awkward to be, I assume, for a woman to be in a wedding gown, bouncing up and down. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it's a Josh. You, you've got a couple of films that uh, have that, don't you? <laughs> yeah, Bouncing Brides number five. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, you remember Bouncing Brides? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That one's pretty good. <laughs> You know, I, I don't like to talk about this, but I have a side hustle involving these, Greg, these bouncy houses. Oh, yeah? I oh, flip yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, I'll buy them. <laughs> is is then, that right? Yeah, yeah. Throw in a little, uh, you know, granite countertops. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you should do, like, see uh, see if you can get a show on the uh, Home Improvement Channel or something, Josh. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and Greg, just at my a cursory <laughs> glance at the Internet, there are a number of uh, videos of bouncy houses flying down oh. streets. Yeah, I, I, it, it's it's good stuff, but but please stake them down, folks. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of, uh, of course, goofy names for the companies. There's ten thousand bouncy house companies in my the uh, United States. Yeah, uh, my favorite was Afford a Bounce, which <laughs> <laughs> says it all, really. Yeah, yeah, don't do that for your children. It's, it's, it's also known as Contusion Town. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Still safer than a trampoline, I think would be safe to say. Oh, man, uh, my buddy Tim Convy, uh, he bought a new house and it came with a trampoline. Nice. It's, got, oh. it's so fun. It's uh, It's got uh, netting on the side. Oh, that's so the I best. That, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah. There's this, uh, the, the biggest bounce house is this, uh, it's a thousand square meters, like 26,000 square feet or something. Holy it's, cow called Big Bounce America. It travels around, oh. and it's got slides, ball pits, a uh, basketball court, uh, and a, a, a DJ booth. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Really? Uh, is, yeah, it, that... is it bigger than uh, the Jumbo Jump? Well, does, I mean... Does, does it give square footage? Because I just looked it up at Guinness World Records. Almost uh, it, over 15,000 square feet, the Jumbo Jump. I think Big Bounce America is, uh, is bigger. Yeah, well, that's someone yeah, better tell the Guinness so. people. I thought I saw 26,000. I don't want to argue with Guinness, especially in public, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, big bus. Also, the, like the, the world record for the most vomit ever cleaned up off of a... Uh, oh, God. Yeah. Uh, really? You can imagine. Yeah. Have you taken the uh, kids... Tom? Oh, I'm sorry, Greg. Go ahead, Christy. Now, have you ever been to one of the bouncy houses on water? The big floating... Yeah, like, those are great. They oh, are no, that so looks like fun. fun. Oh, they shoot you into the air? Yes. Those are the best, yeah. They are so Ooh, fun. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. It is, even as adults. You're like four feet off the water, and then you bounce around until you fall in. <laughs> I'm a, not like a... Have a, a lifeguard present, by the way. Yes. Uh, I'm not a physicist, and maybe, Tom, you would understand this a little better. I guess because of the constant, uh, the fan, the constant air pressure, mm -hmm. uh, um, 
it you can they it can have little little punctures or little little seams and it's still going to be fine like our little air leaks i guess yeah mm -hmm. get out the tape yeah, yeah. You're, you're okay with just a, a, a as, as long as that. Uh, what I like to do is I like to get one of those big bouncy houses that's not blown up yet, you know, with the fan. And I like to uh, sit in the front yard and uh, just, uh, and and blow it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Yeah, yeah, I just blow it. Eventually somebody will be like, hey man, there's a fan. I'll be like, oh, thank God. <laughs> uh... Uh, Greg Warren is uh, going to be live in person. You can see him at the Funny Bone in Des Moines, Iowa, this Friday and Saturday. Then if you're at the NCAA wrestling show in KC, Wednesday, March 20th, your special wrestling hunk. Greg also has a couple of great specials out there. You can find him. Uh, that would include the salesman and where the field corn grows. Greg, good luck with the condo. Yeah. Uh, hope oh, you get back, back home soon. It's going to be a while, Tom. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, was your furniture ruined, too? Not a lot of it. A couple of pieces. Yeah. Mm. Does yeah the I think a, dr a, a dresser and a, a couch. I Does think. the place smell? It. Well, right now it smells like that... Uh, uh, antimicrobial or stuff you know like sure. whatever they use to clean it up yeah, yeah. i mean it, it really didn't like I, it, it happened and they were out there with like uh 10 guys 60 minutes after it happened with the big you fans know, so. and oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. okay was, well best of luck we hope to see you uh, reporting from home soon Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Greg. Bye, Greg. Greg. Bye, guys. Great shows. This portion of the Bob and Tom Show, uh, Josh, is brought to you by your feet. Yes, that's right. If you're uh, on your feet all day, working, moseying about, you're putting stress on your body. I think you know that. What kind of support is currently in your shoes? Do you have that lame, thin liner that looks like a lasagna noodle? It looks like a piece of bologna. Ugh, yeah. Get that out of there. It's yeah. offering you zero support. Go to orangeandsouls.com. If you have back pain, hip pain, or knee pain, you know how much it affects your daily routine. It's super frustrating, especially when you don't know why it's happening. Well, it could be because your foundation is off. Orange insoles offer arch support and a deep cut to properly support your heel, your feet, and thus, your entire body helping to alleviate that pain. Think of a table. It wobbles without proper support, doesn't it? It all starts from the ground up. Make sure you're secure from your feet up. These are great for work boots, sneakers, dress shoes, high heels, golf shoes, you name it. Find the right fit. When you go to orangeinsoles.com, you can take that insole quiz and get the perfect sizing for you. Head to orangeinsoles.com for free shipping. That's uh, right. Plus, orange insoles come with a 60-day, we want you to be happy, guaranteed. No cutting required. Thank goodness for that. You don't need a big sheet that you have to get the scissors out and try to figure out <laughs> what your shoe size is. Hey, look, is. it looks like four angels holding hands. No, no, you cut it wrong. <laughs> and meanwhile, my back is killing me. These insoles are true to size. <laughs> That's orangeinsoles.com. Check them out. See if they're right for you. I think you're going to find they are and that they really help you feel better. Feel better and do more, I say, with orangeinsoles.com. All right. It's not just about your feet. It's about your whole body from the ground up. Thank you, Orange Insoles. Uh, I'm going to remind you we got a special event coming up in Charleston, West Virginia. Details on that in just a couple minutes. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Good. Hey, hi, I'm Tom, this is Chick, that's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guests. Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns Plus. Do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right, it all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or Deacon, Come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Aww. Tickets on sale now, and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See you there! <laughs> Q 
295 Night Ranger when you close your eyes. It's 842. You're with Bob and Tom on a two for Tuesday. Good morning. Howdy. Great. Holmes. Holmes. <laughs> Sherlock. <laughs> Let's play word association. Okay. Howdy. Holmes. Sherlock. Holmes. John C. <laughs> <laughs> With Bob and Tom. Holmes. The human tripod. I see. Okay, I'm sorry. Bob. That's all right. You From 6 a.m. and for the next bad. four hours, Bob Cavoyan and Tom Griswold yeah, fill the airwaves with jokes and pranks that range from silly to hilarious <laughs> and from body to sick. Uh, why is sex like air? Why is sex like air? I give up, Bob. Because it's no big thing unless you're not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> they deliver a national like lampoon <laughs> sort of humor that leaves the audience <laughs> laughing while wondering how Q95 can broadcast some of the things they say. Half the jokes, the joke is in your mind. The joke isn't stated outright. Mm -hmm. The person has to put something into it to get something out of it. Yeah, they're fun and uh, people yeah. like them. People enjoy them. They laugh at them. And there's an alternative. You can always change the channel. Mm -hmm. But people aren't. After two years on the air, Bob and Tom have taken Q95's morning show to the top of the volatile morning FM ratings. WFBQ is the third radio station the Zany team has worked for. After six years together, they've got the routine down pat. Bob runs the audio control board, plays straight man, and provides the program's famous laugh. Amateur phylactics. <laughs> Amazing concept, I think, and I think it's going to go Tom sits in a mound of no Notes and papers to provide the program's often quoted jokes oh, and many of its voices. Oh, hello, Mahandas. Hello, Bob. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I am fine today. <laughs> hello, Tom. Hi, Mahandas. You look very good today. Thank you so much, Mahandas. I can much of their the banter is off the cuff with an occasionally rehearsed punchline off mic during a song. And I, I know the punch. Only if it makes you right. late for the ceremony. She's controversial. She's provocative. She's the famous sex therapist, Dr. Ruth Weisboner. Good morning, Dr. Ruth. Good morning. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Dr. Ruth. Their regular spoof on Dr. Uh, Ruth Westheimer features some of their more risque humor. Is it wrong to have sex before you're married? Hmm. Is it wrong to have sex before you're married? Well, no, as long as you're not late for the wedding. <laughs> Bob and Tom's task of filling oh, 20 yeah. hours of airtime every week is made easier by several regular characters phoned in by people around town. Nightclub owner Sonny is a favorite. Great approach. How are things going on at the track? I know you're running the mystery flesh tent this year. Everything is going just fine, Dowd. Uh -huh. I bred that baby up, throw it in some shortening, and uh, serve it up. It's the mystery flesh tent, Dowd. Mm -hmm. That's located, of course, in turn one. It's right there in turn one where people seem to be the most hungry and the least discriminating. Uh -huh. <laughs> Other characters are Voiced by regular visitors to the studio. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Uh, Tiger Don Bardo. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Your Highness. Good morning, Mr. Nixon. Midday you know, personality uh, Jay Baker test. voices the spoof Just on Richard days. Nixon. Now, do you remember... Ronald Reagan sure. visiting the German cemetery over the weekend. Oh, that's right. They, yes. the, the media referred to it as the Nazi cemetery. Mm -hmm. You know, I was the one that put him up to that. I see. I said, babes, this is going to be so beautiful for your career. Trust me on this one. <laughs> I it told figures. him, I said, when I was a young boy, I heard the phrase, the only good Nazi is a dead Nazi. Mm -hmm. I said, Ronnie, you can't miss a whole field full of dead Nazis. <laughs> You slide over there, you put the wreath down, the wreath, and you're cruising. Bob and Tom say they get said, very few complaints from listeners as they poke oh, fun at every special interest offended. group imaginable. And station management has left them unrestrained on the limits of their humor. After two years, the result has been high ratings, a devoted following, and two happily transplanted Hoosiers who say they just might stay to grow old and gray on Q95. Could be. It's very possible. In fact, uh, it's already started. Yeah. <laughs> Bob's getting great. Yeah. Tom's getting old. Yeah. <laughs> this is Greg Todd, Channel 6 News. Oh, I feel so much better now. You know, Bob? Yes. I don't want to say that most of the women that you go out with have... Soccer any... moms? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. The funeral homes that have the minivans that they... That's very fun. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's good. The minivans that they have put those, you know, the fancy scroll work thing they put oh, on the sides. God. Yes, I'm not making this up. And they're like the big town and country vans. Well, I didn't want to die before, but now I really don't. <laughs> it's really God, disturbing. It's, I just had this discussion yesterday with one of my sons. You're going to be dead, honey. You won't know. I know, but the whole minivan thing. I The bumper stickers on that will be horrible. Mm -hmm. You know. 
My orphan child is an honor student. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully done. Uh -huh. Scott Dunn, ladies and oh, gentlemen. Yeah, Jeff Rothband is our guest. Uh, Jeff is a fine, fine comedian. Um, I actually had to do that once. What? Be a pallbearer. And that, oh, my that's God. That's heavy. Yes, that's a heavy, heavy job. Yeah. I actually had to go to a funeral, and I was asked to be a pallbearer, and I, uh, <laughs> always a pallbearer. <laughs> <laughs> Never the corpse. Never the corpse. <laughs> Hi, this is Mike. to win tickets. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We're all here. There's Josh and Christy and Pat and Ace Cosby. Maybe that joke of the day coming up. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Again, coming up, comedian Paul Reiser in just a few minutes. Um, I want to remember to remember to tell you. I think I remembered right now. Uh, kind of September. Yeah, uh, we've got a live show, Charleston, West Virginia. This show on the radio will happen at 6 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, coming up, it will start in Charleston, West Virginia at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. Brought to you by Rock 105 WKLC. And I'll remind you that that evening we're doing a comedy show uh, featuring, I know it's going to be Willie G, uh, Josh, Patty G, Kristen L. be your host. Jeff Oske will be there. It's yeah. going to be a fun time. And tickets for that are available right now. So uh, check in with us live and in person in West Virginia, just around the corner. Looking forward to that. Now we return to the news desk with Christy Lee. What have we missed? Two Ohio women are facing charges for allegedly driving a man's corpse to withdraw money from his bank account <laughs> before dropping the body off at a hospital emergency room and oh. then fleeing. Well, there you go. <laughs> the man was later identified as 80-year-old Douglas Lehman. At his residence, Karen Kasum and Lauren B. Ferrello. Karen Kasum? Kas Kasbum. <laughs> oh. C A S B O H M. Okay. Kasbum, 63, Rock and Kasbum. Lauren is 55. Told officers they'd found their roommate dead earlier that day. Police said the two women and a third unnamed person placed Layman in the front seat of his car and drove to a bank. His body would have been visible to bank staff, allowing the trio to withdraw an undisclosed amount of money from Amazing. his account. Just like Wigan and Bernie. The women were arrested on charges of abuse of a corpse and theft from a person in a protected class. It can't be theft anymore. The money's anybody's, isn't it? No. <laughs> what? Yeah. Sure it is. I'm, it's like so, it, it's no different. You find it on the ground. Yes. Yeah. So obviously they went to the drive-thru. Obviously. No, but they didn't walk him in. They didn't do a, a true weekend at Bernie's and somehow <laughs> no. walk no. him in. Wow. Well, Yikes. remember, in Weekend at Bernie's 2, he didn't need the two guys. He moved uh, via voodoo power. Oh, I didn't, so see, I didn't see the second one. Yeah, that's, why was it that? that's why you didn't see it. It didn't, didn't really have the... What? Yeah, I don't remember that in the first one. Yeah. I remember the first one being somewhat charming. I don't remember yeah. voodoo, voodoo power. No, they introduced that in the part two. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So right. they po they propped the guy up dead in the back seat. No, in the front seat, in the oh, passenger geez. seat. So that the lady could oh, see Oh, I see. The so yeah. that the, in the drive through Did it so work? The yes. They got the money. They got the money. That's amazing. You know, the, the big thing is that their uh, their car has that great new dead guy smell. Oh, <laughs> you want to look at the bright side. This is awful. It's How terrible. old were these women? 63 and 55. 55. So not great. I mean, it's it's interesting that they had an 80-year-old man roommate. Right? But I guess they're also I mean, old. did they put sunglasses on him and a hat? I don't know. You know how they congregate together when they get that age. Yeah, they're yeah. All real, I mean, real old. I, I want to know more deep. I wonder if when they found the guy dead, was he in his pajamas? Did they dress him up? And yeah, you, see, you could see this in a movie going, no, that tie doesn't match that shirt. <laughs> Don't put that on. Probably yeah. sunglasses. Sure. Uh, or maybe God. his eyes were open. People die that way sometimes. Yeah, I guess, they have to put quarters on <laughs> what is, did say the guy's, What was the guy's name again? Uh, what was his name? I already turned the story Layman, over. Layman. Something Layman. Yeah, okay. Mr. Layman. Douglas Layman. Uh, he oh, said, Doug. Douglas once said to him, You'll get my money over my dead body. <laughs> well, there we go. You brought Done. this on yourself. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you asked for it. A Nebraska woman is accused of exploiting a gas pump glitch to get over $27,000 of free gas. <laughs> oh, so she filled it up three times. KOLN. <laughs> 
Lonnie, get in here. <laughs> See, Lonnie runs yeah. the station. Yeah, sure. He's an I don't care whose son-in-law you yeah, are. That's right. Reports that Lincoln police were contacted by Bolzelman Enterprises, who reported someone had been participating in a fuel scam at a pump and pantry. Is it Bolzelman Enterprises? Bolzelman? Hmm. Yeah. Bolzelman. Hmm. Yes, let, the, let the names go. <laughs> <laughs> Police determined a glitch from a software update allowed someone to swipe a rewards card twice to enter the pump into a demo mode, which would allow them to pump gas for free. One 45-year-old woman, a Ms. Dawn Thompson, was identified and found to have used the card 510 times to pump $7,413.59 gallons of gas. Where? Bringing I mean, total losses to over $27,800. In Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska. No, I mean, a one into one car? No, different times, 510 oh. different times. She's also accused of giving the card to others in exchange for payment. The 45-year-old ah. has since been charged with theft by unlawful taking over $5,000. There you go. So you just swipe, like the, swipe the card twice and it's free? Yeah, she had a side business going. Yeah. yeah. God, that's an odd promotion. Uh do all the cards do that? I don't think so. Wow. Okay. No, because it said it was a glitch in the software update. It wasn't supposed to do that. All right. That makes that makes Man. sense. Man. Yeah, uh, that's a lot of gasoline. Yeah. So um, apparently uh, she must have loaned it to a lot of friends. Well, yeah. sold it. She, she sold yeah, it. Yeah. She was saying, One hey, gas if, is if you give me $40, I'll get you 60 bucks worth of gas. Exactly. That kind of thing. Yeah. There you go. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, scientists. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, uh, we're going to stop and oh. uh, see Paul Reiser's. I just wanted to play you something. We were okay. talking about, I think this was the Howler Monkeys. Yeah. And I mentioned the, uh, the, the Howler Monkey Hookers. I don't know how that came up, but uh, I mentioned this song. None of you guys seem to have ever heard it. Remember this one? I remember this song. Hey, mister. Yeah, I never knew those were hookers. I didn't know they were hookers either. But yeah. Mister. Yeah. How do you know? How do you know they're hookers? Out of that? How do you? Why was you? Hey, Mister. They're just bad girls. Maybe they're just they're bad girls on a dance floor. So you're the one that goes to a bar in Las Vegas, doesn't realize they're pros. <laughs> I think I you think have. They were you have really, <laughs> Mister. Really, really made. I don't dance. understand why. A lot of why do we had to listen to that out. What? What's wrong? Because when I went, hey, Mister, they're hookers. Never mind. Uh, we're gonna. We're what gonna, does it have to do with howler monkeys? <laughs> I don't know. I forget how it happened. I really don't. I. I yeah, I never I assumed those were, were those hookers. were hookers. Hmm. They were just bad girls on the dance floor. Bad girls. I love that song. Bad girls. So the, the howler monkeys are going, hey, Mist, that's what they're howling. Never mind. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do my homework and find out more. Oh, my God. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Catch any... Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. Uh, once again, Clayton Anderson, this is, this is called In the Dark. Okay, yeah. great, go for it. All right. Secret. She knows I know how to keep it. Ain't trying to tell nobody. She likes it a little bit naughty. She don't mind giving up those kisses. That ain't nobody's business. She's down anytime as long as I keep it in the dark. With the lights down low, nothing but her high heels. Talking about a smoke show. <laughs> she got my number. We keep it undercover. She only lets me love her in the dark. Solo 
one time right here. Ah, this is me on the guitar. Thank you. So I don't even know every guy want to take her home. That ain't what's going on. No, no, no. She's right here by my side. Going home with me tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She likes to keep it in the dark. With the lights down low. Nothing but her high heels. Talking about a smoke show. She got my number. We keep it undercover. She only lets me love her. Clayton Anderson, that's great. That's a hit. Really great. Yes. That song is a hit. Hey, did you enjoy those videos played in that break? Check out the Bob and Tom YouTube playlist for more great stuff. Oh, well, well, you know, uh, let's go to the phones and uh, let's just go to the phones, huh? Good morning. You're on the program. Uh, hello, Mr. Uh, Mr. Insinuation. Mm hmm. Uh, yes, I have a uh, got a got a. Uh, yeah. Mm hmm. And it's with my <laughs> wife. Oh, OK. And well, she uh, she's not letting you. Uh, you know, or she, or she's not giving you. Well, yeah. Uh -huh. and, uh, oh, boy. You know, I, I was wondering how <laughs> long that would. She's not doing the. Uh... Yeah. And okay. I... Okay. Okay. Uh, have you tried? Yeah, we did that. Okay. Okay. But have, <laughs> but have, you, here, have, have you tried this? Uh, no, we haven't. Okay. Mr. Now, I. have you followed? Now, if you tried that, follow it up with one of these. <laughs> Okay. And then immediately after that, give it one of these. Oh, okay. Don't forget that. All right. Well, thank you for every. Uh... That ought to get you. Well, yeah. Okay. You know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I see by the, the, the we have a short show today, and uh, thanks for calling uh, today. And uh, it's been the Mister Insinuation Show. Mm -hmm. The show. You know. Yeah. You know. Right now. <laughs> Fabulous program. Bob and Tom 24 7. Not on air, online, all the time. Bob and Tom 24 7. I, I recently got married and. Oh, that a boy. Uh, yeah. And my wife changed her name. I know some women have a problem with that. But I wanted her to have my old girlfriend's name. <laughs> so, uh, and, she must really love you. Call me old fashioned. But, you know, hell, you got the tattoo. Why not? <laughs> my wife actually got pregnant on her wedding night. Oh, oh she did? Yeah. Oh. Not by me. Oh. It was a crazy night. But either way, I'm getting a brother. So. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. I don't think her parents like me, though, because apparently when you uh, meet someone's mother, you're not supposed to hug her and go, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eyebrow dandruff. That's yeah. disgusting. Is that, is that a thing? I'm not proud of it. There was, that's, why that's you, why would you bring you. that up on the air? That's I didn't. <laughs> It was, Christy did, it was said in oh, confidence off sorry. the air. Yeah. Don't ever say eyebrow dandruff in front of a potential lover. Oh, oh, okay. oh no. Hey, look, ladies, if I'm on top, you might get sprinkled on. <laughs> well, well, let it snow. Well, you're on top. Well. Yeah, I'll just let everybody else finish that. Oh, I see. Oh. If you're on top, you got about eight, eight <laughs> seconds to live. Is that it? I wouldn't say eight. If you're on top, Godspeed to your ribs, <laughs> ladies. Is that what we're getting at? Bob and Tom. Five. Four, three, two, one. <laughs>
<laughs> Coming up, by the way. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee is at the news desk. Okay. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hi. Ace Cosby's here. I'm hey. Chick McGee. And here's Tom Griswold with a special guest. We're going to hook up through the satellite. There he is. It's Paul Reiser. Looks like he's in a hotel room somewhere. Hi, Paul. Now, why did you guess hotel room? You're right, but what gave it away? Uh, the curtain behind you just has that hotel room look. Um, but you know, I, I'm sparing you the rest of the hotel room, so you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Paul, I, I've been reading about you lately. I know that you're going to do some stand-up. Uh, I just was stunned. I, you're, you've you co-written the book with the great musician Michael McDonald. I know you are also a songwriter and musician. How did that hookup take place? You know, it's a crazy thing. He, Michael and uh, we became friends a couple of years ago, and... Uh, over the years, I, and I've always been a big fan, so I was, like, thrilled to meet him. And then I would ask him questions that I never understood about his career. Like, well, how could you be a Steely Dan when you're also with Doobie Brothers and all these questions? And then finally I joked, I said, you should write a book, you know, and so I wouldn't have to bother you. He went, well, I, you know, I, I th I've thought about it. I don't know how to do that. And I said, well, it just so happens I've written a bunch of books. And uh, we started just talking like this on zoom frankly and uh put all his stories together and i just helped him put it together and it's fascinating because now i understand his career he, he's so singular and there aren't a lot of guys who have worked with as many people across a uh, wide spectrum as he has over so many years and so very proud it's coming out may something may 20th and i think you can pre-order it now or i could read it to you let me grab it <laughs> <laughs> We got a few minutes. Now, when you've written a number of books, and when you do the audio book, that has to take a, a a great deal of time. And ever when you're doing that, do you say to yourself, "Wait a minute, I can make this. Yeah. I can make this funny, or I can make the, do you do ad lib, or do you have to stick to the script?" Uh, it's so funny. It's so funny, Asa, because we're in the midst of doing that now. He's doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm just, you know, uh, helping him sort of through that. But it's it's hard because you want to go. You work really hard to make it a book so somebody can read it. And then you have to come in and read the book. It's like, well, especially with stand-up, my book, I remember I would take all my stand-up, which I was used to performing, and I would try and make it accessible as written, and then I would read that. I go, well, now it's lost 40% of the funny. <laughs> it sort of has dripped away. But his book is, his book is there's a lot of funny stories in this book, but it, it, there's a lot of really uh, deep, wonderful, uh, rich stories about his life and his journey, which is very unique but I think hopefully relatable to a whole bunch of people. So very proud of the way that came out. Yeah, we're talking with Paul Reiser, and one of the many things that he's doing is he's been working with Michael McDonald. I know you've got a stand-up gig coming up. I'll talk about that in a second. I also, and I don't know much about this, but I've been told you're working on a comic book. So here's the crazy thing, because I don't know anything about comic books, but somebody came up with an idea and that really made me laugh. They said, what if your character in Aliens, Burke, mm. what, if, what if he lived... I went, well, that's really funny because everybody you always, for years, people would say, you know, in Aliens, you played such a bad guy. What was it like playing such a bad guy? <laughs> and I would always joke, well, you say bad, I say misunderstood. <laughs> so now, uh, if he lives, I said, well, let's tell the story of why he might have been perceived as a bad guy. Maybe there was some explanation. So Marvel, who knows a few things about comic books, uh, is putting it out the first. And my son, my 23-year-old son, who's like a comic book genius, uh, worked on it. There were like five of us writing. And uh, he turned out to be a great writer. And it turns out all those years that I said, get out of your room and stop reading comic books. I was wrong. Apparently, he's made a career now. So, uh, yeah, so go to your local comic book store. It's called What If Aliens, uh, Marvel's What If Aliens. And... Uh, You'll see. I was misunderstood the whole time. Wow. Aww. Yes. Aww. Paul, I know that you, know you were trained as a musician. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go. No, I was like, what's great about a comic book? You don't have to memorize any line. You don't even have to do anything. <laughs> it's yeah. just all, don't have to get up it's all there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want. Paul, you've done a whole bunch of things, but you started out as a musician. How did that transition go? Were you on stage in a band? You started being funny. and How did you switch to <laughs> no, being stand-up? I was never... Uh, you know, I was always, 
I always loved stand up. When I was a kid, my friends were going to Led Zeppelin concerts. I was going to George Carlin concerts in the village, you know, and uh, Robert Klein and, and uh, Richard Pryor. I always loved comedy. I, and I played piano, so I was a music student in college. But I was never really going to make a career of that. I wasn't, like, good enough. <laughs> um, so there wasn't really a transition. It was like, this is fun, but I'm going to pursue comedy. Which, you know, makes parents very happy after they've paid for four <laughs> years of college. <laughs> Let's, I'm just going to go and hang out at clubs and not make any money for years. Um, <laughs> they were thrilled. But, yeah, that's what I started doing. That's what I, my goal was, just to be a comedian. And I t ended up, when Mad About You was on the air, I took a lot of years off from doing stand-up. And then when it was over, I kind of was happy to be home and, you know, just uh, get off the radar for a while. So it's only been a few years that I've been back doing stand-up. Um, but that's my, you know, that's my first love, and it's always so much fun. So I'm going to be in, uh, in Troy, Ohio yep. next month, April 13th, Friday, Saturday, April 13th, at the... Uh, Arbogast Performing Arts Center. That's I right. don't know why it's called that. Do you know why it's called that? I don't. I'm Is guessing there was a Mr. Arbogast, I hope. And uh, it was very, uh, very nice of him. He opened his wallet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Troy, Ohio, Saturday, April 13th. Uh, we're speaking with uh, Paul Reiser. Hey, now, Paul, you grew up in the vinyl era. So did you have a particular comedy album? I know for me it was uh, Robert Klein, Child of the 50s, is the one that I listened to a thousand times. Was there a particular uh, record that you just played over and over, Carlin or Yeah, well, that Breyer? was one for sure. That was Robert Klein for sure. And uh, George Carlin's first records, AM, FM, and Class Clown. But the one that was, um, there was sort of my Rosetta Stone, the album that opened up my world was the 2,000-year-old uh, man, Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner. Mm -hmm. And uh, that came out early. That was out in the early 60s, and I didn't discover it till somebody... It pointed it uh, pointed me that way in when I was about fifteen, and I said I've I, I just never heard comedy like that and laughed that hard, and uh, and then of course years later I ended up Mel Brooks I, both Carl and Mel uh, were guest stars on Mad About You Mel Brooks did about five episodes so it was like you know the king was coming and it was it was uh, it was great to get to know these guys and work with them. Yeah. And you've worked with some I mean, some really amazing people. Uh, the Comiskey Method well, was I'm, a great show a couple of years ago. I oh, loved yes. it. I saw every one of those. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Look at you. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the nice things is you get to sometimes uh, work with people you've long admired. So Comiskey Method on Netflix was working with Michael Douglas, who was great, and Alan Arkin, who was another one of my idols growing up. And, uh, you know, one of those things I'm mad about you, we had guest stars were our dream people all the guys that we all the people that we grew up with carol burnett and carol o'connor we had jerry lewis uh we had yoko ono not known for stand-up but very very funny <laughs> um, we had lyle lovett uh was the guy who married uh, helen hunt and myself on sh on the show uh we you know so we just were thrilled to get to meet and work that's one of the greatest parts of of this whole journey is getting to work and meet with meet and work with people that you admire so i've been very lucky i'm trying to remember didn't we talk to you about something with peter falk i'm am i getting this right peter, no exactly peter falk i was going to bring it up but but uh yeah peter falk was was the guy he was my my hero my acting hero and and uh not that I dreamed of being an actor. I think I dreamt of being a comedian, but I just loved Peter Fox. I wrote this movie. It's called The Thing About My Folks. We did it about 15 years ago. I think it was the last role that Peter did. And uh, he was great. You know, he was one of these guys that everywhere you went, people just adored him. Women, women found him charming. Guys all wanted to be with him. And he was lovely. He was cranky. <laughs> but he was, you know, I was lucky he liked me because if he if he, he didn't suffer fools, he was like, I don't think I care for this guy. He would just, he would just dismiss you. <laughs> That's what I wanted to see. Uh, uh, Paul Reiser, once again, live. And this is going to be so cool in person. Arbogast Performing Arts Center. Troy, Ohio, Saturday, April 13th. Be on the lookout for the comic book. Uh, you can go to Paul's website, and he's got all the information about all of his stuff, the various books, etc. And the one coming out about the great uh, member of the Doobie Brothers, Michael. McDonald, who is, by the way, currently touring with the Doobies again. 
Yes. Oh. Tom, you have, you've done this before. This is not your first uh, rodeo, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you, you seem to have a gift. Yeah. <laughs> Hardly. Uh, Paul, I'm a big fan, <laughs> and uh, I the, the, you've, the career you've had is so incredibly varied. Yeah. I mean, you look at some of these uh, things, uh, some of these, we've all seen, it's one of those things where no one can see everything Paul's done, probably not even his family. But, wow. And being like Stranger uh, uh, You thing. know, I... Well, it's been it's been an interesting ride, and and uh, I've been lucky enough to get to play with some nice people and work on some nice things. You know, by the way, get to be on the Bob and Tom show. I didn't see that coming, but look at you. <laughs> yeah, lucky you. I, I do yeah. have I, one last dumb question. I get um, I aggravate everyone all the time when I mention the album, The First Family. Now, with uh, Vaughn Meter, Vaughn Meter, did that happen to cross your path at all, or is that or were you a little too young for that? No, I, I we had that. That was one of the first albums that I remember, uh, and that wasn't me. My parents bought that, but it was sort of uh, ubiquitous. Everybody had yeah. that album. It seemed it was it was. Uh, the Ken it was in the heart of Camelot, and everybody loved the Kennedy family, and uh, that was a great. <laughs> was a great. Uh, I don't even know. I haven't heard it in. 60 years. I don't know how great it, it, it was. It was the largest selling vinyl album in history for a while there. And when, when you mention yes. to people of a certain age, they go, oh my God, yeah. And then, of course, the famous Lenny Bruce line. Yes. Uh, you know, <laughs> rough day yeah. for Vaughn Meter. <laughs> on, that yes. note, on that note, Paul, <laughs> thanks but so I much like for your time. Current. It's good that we're current, Tom. Yeah. You and I, we can talk about all the latest developments yeah. in the Vaughn Meter <laughs> channel. <laughs> uh, thanks, Paul. We'll see you. Okay. Have a great Thank show you. in Troy. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. I remembered the uh, Peter Falk episode of a um, uh, TV thing. That was great. Now, uh, where were we? Um, oh, I know. We're going to talk to Chick McGee. About Simply Safe. Safe. That's right. The design it yourself, do it yourself home security system. You guys know that. Uh According to FBI property crime data, most home break-ins happen in broad daylight. And the days now are, it's official, we're in daylight savings time. And the days are getting longer. Protect your home with Simply Safe. Experts and customers love Simply Safe. Comprehensive protection. Just named Best Home Security System of 2024 by U.S. News and World Report and recognized for Best Customer Service in Home Security by Newsweek. Advanced technology protects every room, window, and door of your home while cameras keep watch for suspicious activity 24-7. No long-term contract ever. You get the emergency response you need at half the cost of traditional home security. It is easy to install yourself. I've done it, or it's available. You can have their professionals do it for you if you'd like. And Simply Safe has a 60 day risk free trial. If you don't love your system, return it for a full refund. Protect your home today. Bob and Tom Show listeners get a special 20% off any new Simply Safe system. When you sign up for Fast Protect monitoring, just visit simplysafetom.com. That's simplysafetom.com. Remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. Coming up, uh, were they hookers or were they not hookers? We have the answer. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Morning laughter <laughs> <laughs> just might be the best medicine. to the wildly successful Mr. Obvious show. <laughs> I'm your host, Mr. Obvious. Let's take a call. Hello, Mr. Obvious show. Uh, hello, is this Mr. Obvious? Speaking. Hi, Mr. Obvious. Uh, Long-time listener, first-time caller. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, just want to say, uh, first of all, I really love your show. Really enjoy listening to it. I think you do a great job. Well, kind words indeed. And thank you, caller, for calling the Mr. Uh, Obvious show. No, Mr. Obvious? Yes. Uh, here's my problem. Oh, Okay. Well, the thing is, uh, I think I got some kind of animal uh, trapped in my house. Oh, yeah, like a pest problem or something? Yeah, uh -huh. um, well, it's, it's even bigger than that. Uh, I think it's some kind of critter that's trapped down uh, underneath my sink somewhere. Oh, my. Now, do you live in a rural section of town? Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Uh, uh -huh. I live on the outskirts of town here. And, uh, well, here's the thing. I think it's caught underneath my sink, and I've opened the doors and, and my cabinets there and looked underneath, and I can't find it anywhere. But I can hear him down there making noise. Oh, you say you got a critter and you can hear him. Now, what what yep. kind of sound does he make, caller? Um, well, it's kind of a growling, kind of a, well, I'll try to imitate it for you. It's kind of like, 
Uh huh. Uh, this is under your sink in your kitchen. Yeah, uh, I mean, it sounds like you might be caught down there in the pipes. <laughs> now, this is not uncommon for your uh, rurally located homes to have a raccoon or a possum uh, under the house. Now, but you say he might be stuck in the pipes? Yeah, that's what it seems like. Because, uh, in fact, I think that's how he's living there. Uh, he seems to eat stuff that my wife throws away down the sink after dinner. She'll, <laughs> she'll wash the leftovers down the sink uh, after we get done eating. I think that's what he's eating because I can hear him down there growling and uh, chewing. Huh. What was the sound again, caller? Well, it's uh, she'll put the stuff down there in the sink and run the water, and then uh, you can hear him. It's kind of going... <laughs> like that. Huh. Now, is there anything else that corresponds with the, uh, the growling that your wife does there in the kitchen? Huh. Um... Well, it, it does seem like uh, it usually happens whenever she tries to turn a light on. <laughs> there is a thing. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, there's a light switch there. She'll try to turn it on. Uh, uh -huh. thing is, the light don't come on. Uh, uh -huh. I, I, I think the light bulb must be burnt out or something, but I can't even find a place to change the light bulb on it. <laughs> anyway, she'll try to turn that light switch on, and uh, you can hear him down there just... Um, Seems to make him mad as anything. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is in the kitchen under the sink, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, I, I figure he's caught in the pipes. Right. So I figured I'd try to get him out of there. Uh -huh. Well, I reached down there with my hands when I heard him growling. Uh -huh. And I mean, that thing about ripped my fingers off. Bit into me. Boy, it hurt. Well, I think I know what your problem is, caller. It's, uh, it's a garbage disposal. So, uh... Uh, is that uh, something something like a raccoon? No, caller. It's uh. No, it's something something littler, like a uh, like a mouse. <laughs> no, caller. It's a machine that's hooked to your uh, your drain pipe there under your sink that chews up uh, uh, food that uh, makes it rinse right down the pipe there. It's an actual machine. It's not an animal at all. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. I never made the connection. You just get rid of the garbage. There you go. Sounds like a critter. Ah, no, no, no. I, I know, yeah, it's not a critter. It's a, thanks for calling, though, caller. Mr. Obvious? Yes. You're a lifesaver. Thank you. Uh, that'll do it for this week's show. Uh, thank you, and uh, good luck uh, from everyone here on the Mr. Obvious Show. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Hey, hi, I'm Tom, this is Chick, that's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guest Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass and Mouth Horns. Plus, do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right, it all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or Deacon, Come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Oh. Tickets on sale now and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See you there! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Larry Reeb, Uncle Larry. It's a sick world, and I'm a happy guy, and you're listening to the Bob. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We just talked with Paul Reiser. Nice guy. Very nice man. Very, very, very talented, talented guy. Griswold. Uh, yeah, and uh, he's got a, a, a quite the uh, career. Yeah. A little bit of everything. Yeah. You know? yeah, I want to say, I think he wrote the theme song. 
to I'm mad about you. He yeah, did. is that right? Yeah, yeah. I because I, 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 I knew he was a musician and mm -hmm. uh, stand up. His stand up comedy gets great reviews, and he's going to be among other places. He's going to be in Ohio, as we mentioned Troy, at Ohio. the Arbogast and Troy coming up on Saturday, April thirteenth. Um, Early this morning, I think we were talking about howler monkeys, and I went beep beep toot toot to their prostitutes. Mm -hmm. And you guys all looked at me like I was insane. Um, that's from a huge Donna Summer hit from. But yeah, bad girls. But you didn't set our, it up that way. In our defense, we look at you because you are insane. And you just of, said, "Hey, Mister," and then it's, here it is. From and this is the song "Bad sing. Girls." This was number yes. one in the summer of '79. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. <laughs> I'll spend some time with you. You can get you. But it's, yeah, it's about, uh, it's about uh, prostitutes. I never knew that. I looked up the lyrics during the break, and I was shocked to find you were right. How about the monkeys, though? How do they get through? I don't know how the howler monkeys get involved with Yeah, I don't know what uh, the howler monkeys <laughs> had him think of uh, Donna Summer. Uh, well, you guys had the howler monkeys. Do you have that sound effect? This is Well, well what is yeah, it? but it doesn't have anything to do with that doesn't sound anything like Donna it. Summer. You said Leonard Cohen. That made sense. I was thinking my favorite hit from the Howler Monkeys, of course, was their cover of uh, Leonard Leonard Cohen. Yeah, I could do that for you. Oh, you know, can you? I've heard they make the loudest sound, stay in the trees, never touch the ground. But you don't really care for monkeys, do you? <laughs> hey, look, there's a fourth. And a fifth, the sixth one fell, and he slipped. Now the poor thing is screaming to the other howler monkeys. Howler monkey, howler monkey, howler monkey, howler monkey. Oh, is that nice? Beautiful bat. Now, uh, we have so a letter. naturally, you thought of Donna Summer yeah, from, from all that. No, no, I, we were discussing what they were, what were the monkeys saying, and I, th I think I said they were maybe they're prostitute monkeys. I don't know, <laughs> but we I have a really nice letter here. Yeah. Uh, from uh, someone who's a, a howler a, monkey handler, a, a veteran, yeah. and unfortunately had an encounter with a howler monkey. <laughs> okay. This is really fascinating. Um, the army uh, has a jungle survivor school in Panama. Sure. One rule was don't f with the howlers. We would do land navigation patrols where a squad would get dropped off and be given a compass. The goal was to find your supplies that were hidden and then work your way back to the base. The monkeys, the howler monkeys, knew that we'd be carrying food hidden somewhere in our gear. They would follow us and howl the whole time. It was really annoying. It would drive you nuts. One guy had had enough one day. He picked up a rock and threw it into the trees. The jungle went silent. Then, like a horror movie, all of the monkeys started going wild, oh. figured out which soldier had thrown the rock, jumped on him and his pack, pulled off his helmet, threw poop at him, <laughs> and left everybody else alone. Wow. Hmm. We were out there for nine hours. By the time we got back, this guy was almost insane from the monkeys harassing him. <laughs> to this day, I can't stand it. the howl of a monkey. I don't like to see a monkey, and I laugh my ass off thinking about that day. Thank you. Thank you for that letter. That's really nice to take the time to write Man. us from Sarge. Thank you, Sarge. Hey, Sarge. It's a little, little howler monkey hunk. <laughs> Sorry I missed the story. You didn't miss it. We just did it for you today. Oh, I know, but I guess you guys did it on Friday. Yeah, we did. Okay. Sounds like... Uh, <laughs> why wouldn't the Jake's other? Why like wouldn't it. the other soldiers help him? They just let the guy. They gave him up to the howler monkeys. Hey, he's the idiot that threw the rock. Well, that's, that's they, not they, the they, army they, way. They didn't let him kill the guy. Hey. And if they had, they would have brought the body back. Uh. An army of one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess. Now, okay. uh, Pat. You told me in the hallway that you have a song about a story we already did. Uh, uh, what was that now? Yeah, I got gun shy, though. The story didn't go over very well. What and, story, uh, babe? Oh, uh, the, the two-faced cow story. Oh, No one yeah. liked it, so I did. I like it's a good story. It's a sad story. Uh, it's a creepy you, song. A rare two-faced cow was born in Louisiana. Go on. And you he's been sent to song. Washington oh, to be a congressman. He's not been sent to Washington. <laughs> <laughs> one face for for raising money and the other face for making laws. <laughs> So, the, you know the story, right? You didn't go over that well, but uh, maybe the song... <laughs> so, so it, it's an anomaly. This this cow has yeah, two... one in 400 million yeah. chance Two of faces, birth. and yeah. they don't know how long it's going to live. Short lifespan. Well, here we go. Two-faced cow. What a way to go through life. <laughs> 
We have a calf with four eyes and two noses that was born last night. My wife, the other two-faced cow, <laughs> is in bed with the farmhand now. <laughs> Leave me to take care of this two-faced calf while she's getting plowed. <laughs> an, extra, an extra two mouths to feed and one's rolling around in the hay. Guess which one of these two-faced cows only lives three days? Oh, two-faced cow and a peckerless farmhand named Pete. <laughs> Take your clothes, leave the truck, and you two hit the street. Oh, we made the news. The farm will thrive. We're making money now. Thanks to the two-faced cow, and no thanks to you, you two-faced cow. <laughs> so, yeah. So he killed her. No, 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 no. no, no, the, no, other, no. Uh, the other, the other cow animal, only lived three days. Three days. Well, oh, I see. No okay, okay. On the calf. But Pete got his. Uh, Pete got his. Pete. Pete. Pete's, yeah, you know, Pete's no, pecker. Pete's pecker. Pete's a tiny pecker. He didn't get caught. Pe pe well, you said peckerless. I thought he got his pecker uh, picked. Uh, okay. Now let the facts get in the way of a good tune. <laughs> I don't know why you didn't. Why you abandoned that one, Pat? I think it had. It was really good. How many peckers could uh, Peter uh, pack? We, uh, let's let's return to Christy Lee at the news desk. Have we missed anything? Yeah, an interstellar signal that was linked to aliens, apparently, according to scientists, was actually just a truck. Researchers at Johns Hopkins My fault, just the truck. University <laughs> Don't worry about it. says sound waves that were recorded in 2014 were believed to have come from a meteor fireball north of Papua New Guinea. It was linked to aliens after debris also related to the meteor was found and identified as having extraterrestrial technological origin. However, planetary seismologist Benjamin Fernando said the signals have all the characteristics we'd expect from a truck. Can you hear the drums, Fernando? <laughs> and none of the characteristics we'd expect from a meteor. It took all this time, 10 years, to figure that out? Yeah, it's this kind of a famous thing in the world of science. This is the, they thought this was the sound of aliens. But it turns out it was... They've been looking for it for quite a while. They're... The signal changed directions over time, uh, uh, exactly matching a road that runs past the seismometer. <laughs> okay, that's this is weird. Yeah, but yeah, this was a. They were exploring the sound for years, and finally they realized, oh wait a minute, it's just a truck. Yeah, remember the story we had about the there was another one like this, and it turned out to be whenever they found out the the what they thought was a signal from space, it was every time somebody downstairs used the microwave. <laughs> and it whatever it's sensitive. No. Yes. Absolutely. A couple years ago. Absolutely. So this why is this? <laughs> so is that, is it the break room where the microwave is for the staff? Yeah. It was one of those, it was, it was like one of those giant, you know. The NASA building? One of those dishes the size of a football field. Sure. They thought yeah. they had this alien thing, occasional sound coming in and it was some kind of interference caused by the electrical circuitry for the microwave. Sometimes Jody. really smart people are dumb. Jody Foster, right? Contact? Yeah, kind of. Matthew McConaughey. But, but in this case, the, the sound that they were examining year after year turned out to be a truck. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking the aliens would say, uh, Clatu, Barado, Nikto, good buddy. Uh, what's your 1020? Oh. Uh, what's your 1020 there, good buddy? Uh, wow. So. There's a funny story out of Kentucky. A high school had to be evacuated after a student deployed so-called fart spray in the building. Oh, yeah? Officials at Oldham County High School reported smelling a strong gas odor, odor rather, that resulted in students and faculty being evacuated. They were allowed to return after firefighters determined there was no gas leak. Detectives and a school resource officer determined that the source of the strong odor was a non-toxic concentrated liquid commonly advertised online yeah. for use in pranks. This happened at high school all the time. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, oh yeah. Like I'd say once a month somebody would let off a stink bomb or I've spray never, would no, they evacuate I've never the building? Been around. No, never had to do it. We just had to sit there and live with it. A 17-year-old female student who allegedly poured the fart spray into a trash can <laughs> caused the evacuation. That's, uh, the, that's, that's the best part the of the story. story. Yeah. Happy Women's History Month. <laughs> we got the girls now All doing right, it. ladies. That's good for her. Um, I wonder if they'll put uh, on the label of the fart spray like a review going, evacuated, a com evacuated an entire American high school. Maybe. Yeah, it's shocking. Well, maybe these days they evacuate for stuff like that. But yeah, sure, yeah. they've got it. They, they don't know what it was. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Did you ever pull a prank in high school? Uh, no, I was too busy trying not to flunk out. I, oh, Really? Well, really? Yeah, we didn't do the. Were you absent a lot, or did no, you... no, 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 almost never. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you do? Did you guys? Do... Well, the senior prank is being 
become kind of a thing now. Yeah. I was not, uh, no, I was not a part of the senior pro- I know Same. Who, I knew who did it. I'm trying to remember right. what it was now. Yeah, the, for the, for our senior prank, they had to get up so early, and I was like, I'm not going to take part. They super glued <laughs> pennies yeah. to all the locks. Oh, yeah. So, we had a, on graduation night, somebody sh- streaked the ceremony. I remember that. Yeah, we did. Well, that was a big time then. Yeah, the that mid- was big in late the 70s. The best yeah. senior prank ever was the one where the... Yes, the school took the sheep. I think they they and they they numbered them one, two, four, and five, uh huh, something like that. So and they let them loose in the buildings. So they 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 kept looking for sheep number three that right. didn't exist. <laughs> that was mm-hmm. a good one. Truly a classic. Yeah. Tru- truly a classic. Speaking of students, they're lobbying to dethrone the praying mantis as Connecticut state insect. Why the European praying mantis has been the state's top bug. Since 1977, Josh. Separation of church and state? I don't think uh, a European uh, mantis should be uh, anything to do with us. When a group of children in Vernon proposed it to lawmakers, but now... No to me. Legislators have been (laughs) confronted by more school children who submitted dueling proposals to replace the mantis with either the autumn meadowhawk dragonfly or the spring azure butterfly. They argue that unlike the mantis, which was introduced to the state in the 1890s to help farmers combat pests, both are native to Connecticut and therefore important to the state's environment. I thought the... I see. That just surprised me. I thought that um, in Connecticut, the native uh, insect would be the wasp. Uh, <laughs> White Anglo-Saxon uh, Protestant wasps. Wasps. Uh, lawmakers have proposed oh. a possible compromise. Good to see. Lawmakers of what? Uh, lawmakers have proposed a possible compromise, naming the meadow hawk dragonfly as the state insect, and the spring azure butterfly as the state butterfly. Oh, all right. So the, <laughs> the but the praying mantis is just out. Out. Yeah. Yeah, Outright. praying mantis right. out. Um, have you ever seen a praying mantis? Yes. Sure. They're so cool. They're very they're cool. cool. Almost like they're praying. <laughs> they're like a, yeah. they're like yeah. a stick that flies. They look like they're You're right. They'll they pinch the like, hell out of you, too. They're f- and don't they, uh, aren't they the ones where yep. the women uh, chew off the heads of the yep. men when they get done uh, having sex? Yep. Yes. Sure yeah. do. It's pretty crazy. You think you got it rough. Wow. <laughs> One and done, for sure. I mean, I said head, but I didn't mean... But he's mine, yeah. Okay, now I, you, you don't understand how this is supposed to work. How good is uh, Manta? It's a sweet, sweet butter. <laughs> yeah, it must be pretty good if you know you're going to get your head bit. Chew my off. head yeah. off. Connecticut, I thought the insect would be the wasp. You see, Connecticut. Oh, we oh, understand. Jeez, okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> First of all, let's say this. I didn't, I didn't know that there was a state insect I think in every so. state. Got your flag. I, there you can't your... be a state insect for every there state. There must be. I bet there is. Yeah. I bet there's a t- I bet there are like 50 state things. State food, state yeah. insects, state yeah, they, yeah. flowers, state right. birds, state law Fish, motto. Probably everything, yeah. yeah. I remember somewhere we were talking about, isn't the cardinal the state bird in... More than one state. Six states mm-hmm. or something. Oh, Here's a story. Son of a bitch, a what? list of U.S. state insects. <laughs> Alabama is the monarch butterfly... If New York isn't the cockroach, what are they? I mean, they're just lying. <laughs> uh, Alaska is the dragonfly. Let's go down. Is here. any of them mosquito? Yeah, that's yeah. got to be some. I mean, to be realistic. Firefly. New York is the nine spotted ladybug. Well, that's ridiculous. Yeah. It should be the bed bug or the cockroach. <laughs> well, What's a would... ladybug? Oh, that's ladybug. Ladybug. Oh, ladybug. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The labia bug. <laughs> the ladybug. <laughs> that's something that a, no one finds. It's called a crab. <laughs> New Mexico is the tarantula hawk wasp. Oh, those Ooh. things. You should see. Are they people, giant? There's videos of people who purposely get stung by them. <laughs> oh, because oh. they're so painful? Yes. Oh. I saw that. But they're non-lethal, right? But you Right, get, but they, yeah. yeah, they hurt. Yeah, who was it? Remember that? We had that story. People just roll around in pain when they get stung by those. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Deliberately got stung by them. <laughs> oh, this is good. Nevada is the vivid dancer dance fly. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's a dancer. He I've always wanted to dance. I want to dance, Tom. Uh, no, didn't we had the story last week about the guy that my got father uh, to speak to me? 
<laughs> Montana is the morning cloak butterfly. Oh. I have to cover your face. When you <laughs> there. Well, it's so sad. Morning cloak butterfly. We had the guy that got... Uh, remember he woke up with his... Uh, there was a tarantula on his crotch. No, it was a score. He got bit by a scorpion, scorpion in Vegas. Uh, under his, yeah, the right. guy that got bit the by a scorpion. Oh, the, 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 the scorpion is the one that has the stinger in the back yes. and the pictures yeah. in the yes. front. Right. Yes. The tarantula is what? A spider. A spider. Yeah. Ugh. They're both arachnids, though. Yeah. Scorpion seems like he means more business because he's got pinchers in the front and then something coming in way right. from behind. Yeah. I'm gonna hold you. Yes. You don't even uh, expect it and yeah. really sting you. Yeah. yeah. No, is that, but is that considered an insect? It's considered an arachnid. Scorpions are. No, don't let me. This is. I'm sorry to make you look this up. Is does any state have an official arachnid? Maybe. Oh, jeez. Well, if they've got an official insect. Yeah, that's true. A lot of them have the uh, honeybee as their official uh, insect. Maybe mm. that's to protect them. So they're all positive. They're all positive things. They're not going to yes. have the cockroach. No. The right. titsy fly. No. Mosquito. <laughs> the titsy fly. Lice. Tick. <laughs> I think titsy fly shows up in crossword puzzles. Dang Blood it. sucking tick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right now, um, uh, the spring break is just around the corner. In fact, uh, some schools are already on spring yeah, break. Yeah, they are. Um, and uh, I know we encountered some spring breakers over the weekend. But um, if you're going on a spring break, you've got your kids in the back seat. You want them to be quiet. I'd like to recommend those uh, full-service Raycon headphones or those Raycon earbuds. I love my Raycon earbuds. Tell me more, Chick McGee. That's right. Raycon Everyday Earbuds. You know Raycons. They have the optimized gel tips that fit every ear ever made. And they actually stay in your ears. Whether you're out walking the dog, you're working out, you're chatting on the phone, multitasking, Raycons stay in place. Plus, Raycons seamless Bluetooth syncing, eight hours of playtime, 32-hour battery life, and don't worry about Raycons. You can enjoy features like their easy-to-use earbud tap functions, noise isolation, and awareness mode. And, of course, we have a deal for you. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today and get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. You'll get 20% and free shipping. Just go to buyraycon.com slash Tom. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. Thank you very much, Chick McGee. Coming up, interesting things in the world of history. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thank you. Two comedians. We are joined by uh, Jimmy Pardo. Uh, also, another guy. It's comedian Chad Daniels. Chad, I, I understand that you have a, an injury, that nothing humorous about it, but uh, you look like you're in a little bit of pain. Broke my tailbone. Yeah. Did you break it like Damn. recently or a uh, week and a half ago? Okay. Tailgating, was, tailgating, you, too, you following too closely. You, what you the? can't uh, put a cast on that, can you? No, you mm -hmm. can't. No. Mm -hmm. uh, I was drywalling. I kept bending over to measure and cut and everything, and I guess my leg muscles were too tight or something like that, and it kept rocking it back and forth till finally it snapped. What? From, from, you didn't even hit it on me. Standing? I didn't hit it on anything from right. bending over, and yeah, that's the kind of shape I'm in. Where's that tight? <laughs> oh, and, wow. Uh, never heard of such a thing. Yeah, the doctor said it happens a lot to pregnant women, which was really awesome to hear from your doctor. Mm -hmm. Are, are your breasts tender? <laughs> no, they're not. You're the first, uh, first man for that to happen to? Mm -hmm. Was it? I, uh, wow. It must. It sounds like it was incredibly painful. It sounds like it yeah, is Yeah, my wife actually couldn't sit down for a while. Sympathy pains. <laughs> what? Hey, what? Hey, what? Hey, what? Hey, Hello, Friday morning. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Da, 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 it's so. time for the air base. Ooh, here we go. <laughs> Come on now. Everybody got her? This is the guy that perfected it. Jimmy Pardo, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Hey. Hey. The lyrics. A little red bone. Hey, hey. <laughs> What's the matter with the guy? Say it again. Hey, hey. <laughs> What's the matter with the way? Chicken? <laughs> oh, wait, we've got something new. What happened? Oh, Lou Reed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jimmy Pardo on the air base, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Man, like you just don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know I go. Oh, oh, oh now suddenly it's in a stand-up stand-up acoustic. Oh, that's new. Yeah, right. I like that. Very nice. 
Hold your hold your left hand higher. Remember, it's you. Holly <laughs> <Jared Mathis. laughs> it's not a stand up. Turn it off. Turn it off. It's not a stand up cello. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You no ruined more. it. You ruined everybody's fun. Uh, sorry. You ruined everybody's fun. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Hey, hi, I'm Tom, this is Chick, that's Josh, and this is Christy Lee. Christy, what's happening? Hey, Charleston, the Bob and Tom Show here and our friends at Rock 105 WKLC are bringing us to town for a live show with special guest. Duke Tomato and the Bob and Tom Brass to Mouth Horns Plus. Do not miss an amazing comedy show that night. That's right, it all happens Friday, April 5th at the Charleston Coliseum and Convention Center. If you're listening anywhere within 100 miles of Charleston or Deacon, Come out and see us live on the morning of April 5th. That's a free show. And then get tickets for that night's Bob and Tom Show comedy tour event with who, Christy? Pat Godwin, Josh Arnold, Jeff Oske, Willie Griswold. All hosted by Tom and Christy. Aww. Tickets on sale now and they're going fast. Get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Charleston Coliseum box office. See, see you there! <laughs> Yeah. I can't believe this. You're, you're a talking dog. Uh, well, what are you doing down here in Florida? He goes, well, I started out in New York. I used to teach other dogs how to lead the blind. And then, well, the Gulf War broke out. and So I went over there, and I brought medicine to uh, injured soldiers and rescued soldiers. And that was over. I came back to New York, and I was on Broadway for a while. I was in Riverdance. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you had the, the tragedy with the... Twin Towers, so I helped out there and started sniffing for bombs and things like that. And finally, I decided I just I'd had enough and I was going to come down here to Florida to retire. Mm -hmm. The guy can't believe it. He walks back into the room. The other guys, he goes, "What's the deal? Why are you selling that talking dog for twenty dollars?" The guy goes, "Cause he's a big liar." <laughs> <laughs> Listening to Bob and Tom Radio 24-7. Also with us, Christine Stedman. Now you're a mom? Well, a mom and a grandma. I think you know that. Oh, I know she's, I'm a grandpa. She's just how this Are works. You? Yep. She's uh, been married twenty seven years and still a virgin Tom. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, 28. I have a I have Sorry. a lot of grandkids. My daughter keeps having babies, has one almost every year. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, she called me the other day. She goes, Mom, guess what? I'm pregnant again. There must be something in the air. I'm like, Yeah, you're late. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously. Hello? <laughs> Bang! Hey, hello. <laughs> Sing. I'm getting her fixed. Bob and Tom. You can pick your morning radio show, and you can pick your nose. Be the summer. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. It's time for our little educational portion of the show. But first, well, we have a howler monkey update. <laughs> 
But first, according to uh, oh. uh, Kevin, there is a, uh, a Howler Monkey guitar pick made of people out there. I, I'm gathering it's not made of the monkeys well, themselves. Of course what? not. But it's called the Howler Monkey. Thank you very much for that <laughs> inf information. Um, uh, right now, it's uh, time to check in with uh, Ace Cosby uh, for the fabulous Ace Cosby joke of the day. Ladies. Who's that yeah. sexy man with the deep voice? Mm. Ace Cosby. Joke of the day. This was sent in, and I can't tell if it's funny or not, but. Oh, okay. A cat ate a ball of yarn. Mm. Then gave birth to mittens. <laughs> oh. That was a Cosby's joke of the day. Oh, that that's cute. very good. That's, 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 that's very that's, cute. It's right in with the yeah. Ace Cosby uh, sphere. It uh -huh. might be. Of comedy. Um, it might be adorable. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Gave birth to mittens. Thank you very much, Ace. Uh, time now to uh, review Today in History, ladies and gentlemen. Time now to review Today in History, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Tom. Uh, Christy is the only one that watched the Academy Awards last night. I did. I watched them. Stand oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Okay. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good for you. Go um, sleep. <laughs> uh, the reason I bring it up is uh, on this date in 1961, Barbie's boyfriend, Ken, was introduced. Oh. And, of course, there was that song... Nominated for just the... Ken, and uh, he was he did a magnificent number. He had Slash with him. Yeah, he did. Slash came out, and Wolfgang Van Halen. Yeah, is that right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Fortunately, it didn't win. Uh, no, the other Barbie song won. Okay. Billie Eilish. All right, okay. yeah. that's really good. Um, what do you mean? Fortunately, it didn't win. It was a. I'm just it Ken. Was a fine song. Cute little song. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Crappy movie, dumb song. Uh, let's see. Um... Jim Morrison, in 1971, left for Paris to avoid a Miami jail sentence. He this is on our Today in History. Didn't make it back, sadly. Jim Morrison. you like this one. 1986, the NFL adopted the instant replay rule, changed the game. And then rescinded it a couple years later. And then we still had instant replay at home, so then they brought it back, and there it stays. And also, it's essentially gives them time to go to commercial. So well, I don't. I, that probably didn't hurt. Yeah, but. I think that'd be a good reason. Someone goes, "Hey, we're making an extra twenty million dollars this year because we're breaking for the instant replay." Good I don't idea. I think that was the reason. Uh, they, well, when it, they just want to get it right. Okay, so. uh, Josh, here's one for you. Okay, in 1987, this person scored his fifteen thousandth point. Who would that be? Uh, Wayne. Did Gretzky. I say, yeah, thank you, Wayne Gretzky. Sorry, I stepped on you. No, no, you're good. Wayne, no, the great one. Um, 1989, Cops debuts on Fox. Bad boys, bad boys. What's he going to do? We had the guys in here that were the producers of Cops, and I was quite surprised. We asked them, because people have to sign off. Sure. And I said, how often do people sign off? Remember what he said? Always. They always sign to have it be the air. Yeah. No one ever says, yeah, don't put that on there. Yep. Someone's having their worst day getting, uh, getting arrested. But they're on TV. And he, and he also said that they, whenever they'd be cuffing these guys and taking them away, they'd always say, hey, look at my big screen TV. <laughs> <laughs> kind of and they always say the same thing when they're going to fight somebody. They look at the guy they're going to fight and go, what's up? What's up? What's up? And then they start fighting every time. Now, you'll know this one, Chick. Okay. Um, Major League Baseball, Doc Ellis, born in 1945. The doctor. And uh, the famous uh, LSD no, song. No, he pitched the World Series game on LSD. High on right? LSD. Yeah. Todd Slander's got a great song about that. Um, How'd he do? Did he do all right? He did. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Pirates won that series, I think. He, he wasn't we sure are what family was, days. Huh. Wasn't sure what was going on. Uh, in 1950, the birth of Bobby McFerrin. Great song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. No? I, I yeah, liked him one, yeah. and I liked his vocal, but I yeah, I did not care for that song. But I, he sure can sing, Purdy. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. No, I thought I it was nice. Care. Yeah, that was everywhere. It was good stuff. All the bloop, 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 <laughs> and the hitting his chest. And sure. Everything. That was kind of the novelty of the whole thing. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Why didn't he get one of those? <laughs> no. Mouth harp? Mouth, mouth harp in your mouth. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, Bobby. Happy birthday, <laughs> Mr. McFerrin. He yes. saved money on a band. Crap. Sure yeah. did. Oh, yeah. What did he do live? You go oh, that. <laughs> yeah, did he, he did, did he have like a tape loop or something and he would do the different No, he when I saw him on SNL, he it was all him. Yeah. Just doing his chest. Still yeah. still don't worry, be happy. Okay. Uh, yeah, he had, and he had another song, it was that same kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. And he really does hit himself a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um nineteen seventy one, happy birthday, Johnny Knoxville. Um pretty good actor. 
Yeah, he is a pretty good actor. <laughs> and uh, remember, we saw in the last uh, previews for the last <laughs> Jackass movie, and Josh and I almost looked at each other at the exact same time and goes, "He he broke all of the bones in his body." <laughs> yeah, 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 there, there's no way that they could make that look anymore. <laughs> It was awful looking. <laughs> I'm not sure this is supposed to be an actress. Thora Birch? Sure, American yes. Beauty. Great, yeah. Hocus okay. Pocus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. Okay. And she's in another movie yeah. with Steve Buscemi. I forget. Ghost World. That's, Ghost a, that's World. a terrific movie. That's a great Scarlett movie. Johansson in her. Yeah. yeah. Thora Birch sounds like a breed of tree. Sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, very fun. Well, yeah, uh, that's what happens when you use your... Birch too much. Get Thor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies, keep that in mind if you're if you're Anybody? whittling a whittling a little but whittling a little buddy. Uh, uh, time now to review what we Thor? learned on today's show. Thor, oh my birch is Thor. Oh boy. It's really Thor. Thor a birch. We opened with uh, the Time Channel. That's right. We're deep in the uh, daylight savings time. Uh, what do you think, Tom? We just keep it this time around the, year round, around the clock? I don't know. That yeah? You don't want to weigh in? I know. I'm not going to. You don't want to unreasonably go out on uh, some sort of limb? And... <laughs> I just know that I'm dragging today. I think everybody is. I am dragging. Getting, we, we get up early, and now we're getting up an hour earlier. Tom got some sun uh, while skiing in Colorado. He looks good. Looks ready. Looks like he's been, been out on... Uh, but you guys tell me only one... Uh, the, the right side of my face got no. more than the left. Christy said so. that, and I don't... Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you know, no, you know his... Uh, Christy's eye, that one's lazy. So. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. He does have a point. Get to work, I, I say to her often. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm over here, Christy, and I'm hiding her blind spot. <laughs> <laughs> Get a job, I. Doesn't even come in on Fridays. No. no. Tom saw a out. Tom saw a, saw a Cola Guard TV ad and kept talking about it all morning, about my way, right? I said they're using the classic song "My Way" for <laughs> a thing about. I mean, Cola Guard's a very fine product. I certainly would highly recommend it. Christy used it. Pat's and, used it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you, uh, and it involves uh, defecating into a net. Sort of. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather do that than defecating without a net. Yeah. I can tell oh, you that. Yeah, that's right. Oh, come on! That's the greatest <laughs> three-ring circus I ever saw. That's the Days clean up. <laughs> uh, the bloom could be off the rose. Christy and her husband uh, spent all week uh, watching uh, television shows and counting commercials while they were. No, we are counting pharmaceutical. Pharmaceutical. Even worse. Yeah. Even. It's a lot. It's there are a lot of drugs out there. Tom, Did went, you get to do a shot if you take one of them? They're advertising. No. <laughs> Tom went to a sushi, sushi restaurant in Colorado, and you don't understand. He was sitting right there. <laughs> he was right there. Like, I thought the guy was going to slice his thumb off right in front of me. Uh, very serious yeah. gentleman. I had, he had a... Uh, had a karate suit on. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Bob and Tom Show. Just got to get a hold of us? Call, fax, mail, or email. Get all the contact information you need at bobandtom.com. This is the